I have made dozens of vocabulary videos to help build your GRE vocabulary and your English vocab in general. But this one I think is going to be one of the most epic for three reasons. First, it's from The Economist, one of the most reputable names in the industry and no, I'm not sponsored by them. Second, I would say over 60% of the words in this list haven't appeared in any of my other vocab videos, even though I've made about 50 of them so far. So if you've seen my other vocab videos, this is going to contain hundreds of words that you haven't seen before. And thirdly, the sheer size of this list is impressive. Organized in three levels of difficulty, and so there's so much for you to get stuck into here. In fact, if you haven't learned at least a dozen brand new words by the end of this video, you get your money back. Oh wait, it's free. Never mind. Either way, let's get started with the first word in this awesome vocab list. Because that first word, aberration, and all the other words in this list also have a sentence to go with them, where we can see that word used in context. So what does aberration mean? It means a departure from what is normal, usual, or expected. And the example sentence is, the Fed will probably need convincing that the latest labor market report was an aberration before tightening policy. In other words, they need to be convinced that it was not normal, it was different, it was unusual before they tightened policy. Aberration, a departure from what is normal or expected. An anomaly, essentially. Next word, abreast. Up to date with the latest news, ideas, or information. In touch with, plugged into. These daily updates were designed to help readers keep abreast of the markets, keep up to date, keep informed, keep in touch with the markets. Abstain. Restrain oneself from doing or enjoying something. To refrain, desist, hold back. The decision to abstain from such techniques just and wise though it was, came at a cost. The decision to restrain themselves, to refrain from doing these techniques, to hold back from doing them. Abyss, a deep or seemingly bottomless chasm, a gorge, ravine, a void, an abyss. Whose dire warnings about risks seem more believable? Which abyss looks darker and deeper? Which void, which gorge, deep chasm, ravine looks darker and deeper? Adept, very skilled or proficient at something. Expert, proficient, adept, accomplished. An abundance of clever people, adept in English law, skilled in English law, expert in English law, adept in English law. Agog, fantastic word. Very eager or curious to hear or see something. Excited, impatient, in suspense, agog. We are now agog to know when, on the basis of forecasts, the bank will push up interest rates. We are eager to know when. We are impatient to know when. We are now agog to know when. Allure. The quality of being powerfully and mysteriously attractive or fascinating. Attraction. Lure. Draw. Allure. Yet it was the allure of the Model T for millions of consumers that finally drove the horse off the road. It was the attraction of the Model T, the draw of the Model T. It was the allure of the Model T that drove the horse off the road. Altruism, the belief in or practice of selfless concern for the well-being of others. Selflessness, compassion, goodwill, altruism. Dr. Desity is not the first to wonder, in a scientific way, about the connection between religion and altruism. The connection between religion and selflessness, compassion, altruism. Ambivalent, having mixed feelings or contradictory ideas about something or someone. Equivocal, uncertain, unsure, ambivalent. The first was a chronic lack of focus. Right from the start, Yahoo was ambivalent about whether it should be a media or technology company. It was uncertain, unsure about whether it should be a media or technology company. It was ambivalent. Ambi, by, two is in two minds. Ambivalent. Annul. Declare invalid. 
to repeal, to reverse, to rescind, to annul. Last month's election was a rerun of a vote in October 2015, the results of which were annulled after several candidates alleged electoral malpractice. The results were reversed, rescinded, ruled out, repealed. After they found electoral malpractice, the results were annulled. Apathy, lack of interest, enthusiasm or concern. Indifference, passivity, ennui, apathy. Perhaps most difficult will be overcoming the cynicism and apathy of the public. The cynicism and the lack of interest of the public. The lack of enthusiasm. The apathy of the public. Arbitrary. Based on random choice or personal whim, rather than any reason or system. Capricious. Random. Chance. Arbitrary. The prevailing belief among linguists had been that the sounds used to form those words were arbitrary. The sounds used to form the words are just random, chance, arbitrary. All these sentences, as you can see, come from The Economist itself, which is pretty cool. Arbiter. A person who settles a dispute or has ultimate authority in a matter. The authority, the judge, the controller, the arbiter. The viewer is, ultimately, the arbiter of influence. The viewer is ultimately the controller, the one who has the influence, the judge of influence, the authority on influence, the arbiter, the one who settles the matter, the one who decides. Artless, without guile or deception. Candid, direct, forthright, artless. He is lovably artless and embarrassingly awkward. He is lovably direct, lovably honest, candid, artless. Audacious, showing a willingness to take surprisingly bold risks. Bold, daring, fearless, audacious. It was as audacious as any heist, and yet unlikely material for a Hollywood blockbuster. It was as bold, as daring, as fearless as any heist. Audacious. Austere, having an extremely plain and simple style or appearance. Unadorned, subdued, stark, austere. Not all Western airports have austere arrival concourses, a la Heathrow. Not all Western airports have such subdued, boring, unordained, bleak, austere arrival concourses as does Heathrow. Austere. Blight. A thing that spoils or damages something. Afflicts, scourges, bane, blight. The USFS predicts that within a couple of decades, because of slowing growth and climate-related blights, the forest will become an emission source. Because of slowing growth and climate-related afflictions, scourges, spoiling events, the forest will become an emission source. Blight. Blithe. Showing a casual and cheerful indifference, considered to be callous or improper. Indifferent. Unconcerned. Blasé. Blithe. Mr Cameron's government was too posh, too cocky, too blithe about globalisation's merits. Too metropolitan. It was too posh, too cocky, too indifferent, unconcerned, too blithe about globalization's merits. Blowhard, a person who blusters and boasts in an unpleasant way. A boaster, a bragger, a show-off, a blowhard. His name conjured up associations such as arrogant and blowhard. He was arrogant and a boaster, a bragger, a blowhard. Bolster, support or strengthen, to reinforce, to prop up, to boost, to bolster. If the results are confirmed, they will bolster voters' belief in the system. They will support, reinforce, strengthen voters' belief in the system. Bolster. Bombastic. High sounding but with little meaning. Inflated. Pompous, blustering, turgid. Bombastic. 
Cynics may ascribe Mr. Rubio's mild tone to the diverse population of his home state and the fact that bombastic Mr. Trump trails in the polls there. Mr. Trump is bombastic. He's pompous, blustering. Sounds great, but little meaning. Bombastic. Boycott. A punitive or punishing ban that forbids relations with certain groups. Vetoing that group, shunning it, rejecting it, ostracizing it, boycotting it, making it a pariah. Conversely, some prominent black women have called for a boycott, seeing Mr. Parker's past as a disqualifying stain. They've called to shun him, reject him, avoid him, boycott him. Burlesque. A variety show. A skit, a farce, a striptease. Burlesque. Madame Jojo's a burlesque bar in London, Soho. Essentially a strip bar. More commonly though, I'd say the word is used for describing anything that is raunchy, a bit vulgar, a bit burlesque. Cacophony. A harsh, discordant mixture of sounds. A racket, a noise, a clamour. In 1957, New York subway contained a haphazard mishmash of fonts, both serif and sans, and a typographic designer sick of the visual cacophony, the visual racket, the visual noise, the visual chaos, the visual cacophony, submitted a brief to the transit authority. Cacophony. Noise, chaos, clamour. Chronic. Long-lasting and difficult to eradicate. We're talking about a problem here. It's long-lasting, it's chronic, difficult to eradicate. It's constant, continuing, persistent, chronic. Chron, by the way, means time, so something that's chronic lasts over a long time. Pessimists think that the productivity problem is chronic. It's long-lasting and difficult to eradicate. Coda, a concluding event, remark or section. An ending, a finale. With distinct ballad, opera and hard rock sections, and a pensive or thoughtful intro and coda, concluding event, finale, ending, for good measure, the song was not for listeners in a hurry. It had this thoughtful intro and coda ending. Intro opposite to coda, coda being the ending, the finale, the concluding section. Confound. Prove a theory, expectation or prediction wrong. To contradict, to counter, to go against, to confound. Yet in another sense, the Fed has confounded predictions, has gone against predictions, has countered predictions, has confounded predictions, at least those it made itself. To deign, to do something that one considers to be beneath one's dignity, to deign to do something, to come down from one's high horse to do something. If the Senate deigns to consider and confirm a nominee, if they come down from their high horse and consider and confirm a nominee, if they lower themselves to consider and confirm a nominee, if they deign to do so, Disingenuous, not candid or sincere, dishonest, deceitful, duplicitous, disingenuous, but shamelessly self-interested and probably contrary to his real views on the EU, though it is, the mayor's move is perhaps not entirely disingenuous, not entirely dishonest, not entirely deceitful, not entirely disingenuous. Docile, ready to accept control or instruction. Submissive, compliant, obedient, pliant, docile. Docile with humans, they are fierce defenders of territory and their young. They are obedient around humans. They are compliant, they follow orders with humans. They are docile with humans. Talking about cows, I think. Doff, to remove an item of clothing, usually the hat, I think. To lay hold of, to take hold of to don shoes, to doff them, or even to throw them at somebody. You know what? The only time I hear that word, doff, nowadays, is like to doff your hat in a very formal way. You know, when the gentleman in the 1950s took off their hat briefly for a second, there's like a salute to someone passing by. That's to doff your hat or to doff your cap. It means to briefly lift it off. Quite an uncommon word now, so I'm a bit surprised that that one ended up in this list, but it's good to know. If you're reading about events, maybe, that are slightly more historical. To doff, to doff your cap. Or in this case, to doff your shoes. 
we briefly remove them. To dote, to be extremely and uncritically fond of, to adore, to love dearly, to be devoted to, to dote on someone. Falling birth rates allowed parents to dote on fewer children, to love dearly fewer children, to adore the lesser numbers of children that they had, to dote on fewer children. Endow, to provide with a quality, ability or asset, to equip, to bless, to give. Good and inspiring teachers, meanwhile, are portrayed as endowed with supernatural gifts, blessed with, equipped with, endowed with supernatural gifts. And then you get university endowments, gifts from former students, which are in the form of assets often worth billions of dollars. They are endowments. But here you can be the verb endowed with something, equipped with something. Ephemeral, lasting for a very short time. Fleeting, passing, short-lived. One was Song Dong, just 19 and studying oil painting, which he quickly abandoned. Now he is known for his performances and his ephemeral, sometimes edible, installations. They were ephemeral installations. They only lasted a short time. They were fleeting, short-lived, ephemeral, and sometimes edible, which means you can eat them, which is funny. So they lasted a short time and you can actually bite into them and eat them. Artworks. Ephemeral. Ethos. The characteristic spirit of a culture, era, or community. The character, the atmosphere, the climate of a culture, era, or community. The ethos. Often like a mentality, an attitude, a mindset. He was a member of a generation moved by patriotic spirit, leaving civilian careers to join the army and learn a warrior ethos, a warrior mindset, a warrior character. Facetious, treating serious issues with deliberately inappropriate humour. Flippant, glib, tongue-in-cheek. Facetious, full of levity. More disturbing, says Mr Hart, I didn't note that his column was facetious. I didn't realise that it was glib, taking the mickey, tongue-in-cheek, humorous, not being serious. It was being facetious. I should have noted that. Inappropriate humour. Faction. A small, organised, dissenting group within a larger one, especially in politics. A contingent, a section, a sector, a small faction. One particular separatist faction, or contingent, or sector. Separatist, they want to split away, and it's a faction, it's a small team, a small contingent, a small sector of the political establishment. A faction. Fallow. Dormant, quiet, slack. Inactive. Fallow. Their fickle attention, fickle meaning always wandering around, not staying in one place, might waver for a few fallow years of rebuilding. Those years will be dormant, quiet, slack. Not much going on, inactive. A few fallow years of rebuilding. Falter, move unsteadily or in a way that shows a lack of confidence. To falter, to stumble, to fumble. His early steps were faltering. He was stumbling, he was fumbling, he was faltering. Flail, to flounder, to struggle uselessly, to thrash about, thresh about, squirm, and flail. This means that, though, a good accent, rhythm and grammar notwithstanding, the intermediate to advanced learner is likely to flail. They're likely to flounder. They're likely to struggle. Even though they have this good accent, rhythm and grammar, even the intermediate to advanced learner is still likely in this test to flail. I hope they're not talking about the GRE because after videos like this one, I hope you guys will not flail. You will not flounder or struggle uselessly. Fluke. Unlikely chance occurrence, especially a surprising piece of luck. Oh, that's a fluke. Coincidence, accident, twist of fate. Was this a fluke? Was this a coincidence? Was this an accident? Forage. Of a person or an animal. To search widely for food or provisions. To hunt. To scavenge. To grub. And you must be ready to abandon tired orthodoxies of the left and right, tired dogmas, ideologies of the left and right, and forage for good ideas across the political spectrum. Search for good ideas. 
Notice the forage is metaphorical. They're not literally hunting for food. They're hunting for good ideas in this case. They are scavenging for good ideas. They are foraging for good ideas. But the origin of the word is to look for food, to forage. Fortuitous, happening by lucky chance, a fluke you could say. Advantageous, opportune, fortuitous. Thanks to these sensible policies and the fortuitous tailwind of higher productivity growth, a tailwind is something that is a gust at your back helping you to go faster, and that is fortuitous. It's a lucky chance, it's fortunate, advantageous, it helps out, it's fortuitous, good fortune. Fringe, the unconventional extreme or marginal wing of a group or sphere of activity. You may also know it as a hairstyle that comes down over your forehead, but as a noun, in politics, we're talking about the unconventional extreme or marginal fringe of a group. The periphery, the radical wing, unorthodox. Fringe beliefs reinforced in these ways can establish themselves and persist long after outsiders deem them debunked. These fringe or extreme beliefs can establish themselves. They're radical, they're on the periphery on the outside, they are fringe. Garner, to gather or collect something, especially information or approval. To accumulate, to amass, to assemble. Labs that garnered more payoffs were more likely to pass on their methods to other, newer labs. Labs that gathered, collected, accumulated, amassed, assembled more payoffs. Labs that garnered more payoffs. The gist, the substance or essence of a speech or text. The quintessence, the main idea, what's the gist? Machine translation too has gone from terrible to usable for getting the gist of a text, getting the main idea, the main purpose of a text, the gist. Gossamer, used to refer to something very light, thin and insubstantial or delicate. Gauzy, gossamery, fine, diaphanous. Like a saintly relic, the gossamer threads that tie the two halves offer the promise of miraculous healing. The gossamer threads, the light, thin threads, the fine threads, the gossamer threads. Grovel. To act in an obsequious manner. Obsequious, just like grovel, means to suck up, to flatter, to be servile. And if you're groveling, you're acting in that obsequious manner, in order to obtain someone's forgiveness or favour. I beg you to forgive me, I'm grovelling. Usually you're physically on the floor. Does she get a kick out of my grovelling in the last two years? My sucking up, my desperately requesting forgiveness. Harangue, a lengthy and aggressive speech, a tirade, a jeremiad, a diatribe, a rant. There was an absurd harangue over Starbucks prices. A long, aggressive, angry speech, a rant, a tirade, a harangue. Impetuous, acting or done quickly and without thought or care. Impulsive, rash, hasty. There is a real danger of impetuous decision making. Rushed, hasty, impulsive, impetuous decision making. Indictment. A formal charge or accusation of a serious crime. An arraignment, a citation, a charge with a crime, an indictment. A criminal indictment would, in all likelihood, force the Prime Minister to resign. A criminal formal charge would force the Prime Minister to resign. Inert, lacking vigour, idle, inactive, underactive, inert. America's founders, he argued, put their faith in reasoned discussion among citizens and believed that the greatest menace to freedom is an inert people. Idle, lazy, inactive people. Inert. Ingrate. An ungrateful person. Greater liberty, over the past generation, is abused by ingrates. Ungrateful people who think it's funny to depict their leaders' pantless. Ingrate, ungrateful. Insipid, lacking vigour or interest. Boring, vapid, dull. 
It was a stultifying, a claustrophobic, a stifling procession of patriotic songs, insipid skits and bald propaganda. There you go, you've learnt two words for the price of one. Insipid, boring, vapid, dull, dull skits, sketches, and also stultifying, stifling procession. Amazing. Lax, not sufficiently strict, severe or careful. Slack, slipshod, negligent, lax. Mario Draghi has faced attacks from critics in Germany for being too lax, being insufficiently strict, being insufficiently careful. He's too lax. Listless, of a person or their manner, lacking energy or enthusiasm. Lethargic, enervated, lackadaisical, listless. The people in Ukraine are angry with a corrupt and listless government. One that lacks energy is lethargic, listless. Livid, furiously angry, infuriated, irate, fuming. A livid Vladimir Putin. An incredibly angry, infuriated Putin. Livid. LOL. This is not LOL, laugh out loud. It's LOL with two L's at the end. Meaning to sit, lie or stand in a lazy, relaxed way. To lounge about, sprawl about, drape oneself. LOL. The pair LOL on a green hillside in the south of Munich where he'd bought a house. Relax, lounge, to loll about, to sit down, lie down, or just be lazy in a relaxed way, to loll. Lurid, presented in vividly shocking or sensational terms. Melodramatic, exaggerated, over-dramatized. Lurid, like lurid headlines in a newspaper. Their absence from the public eye tends to spark lurid rumors exaggerated, dramatic rumours. They're over-egging it a bit. It's lurid. Ma. To impair the quality or appearance of. To spoil, ruin or damage. These oversights ma an otherwise engaging and interesting account. They damage the account. They impair its quality. They spoil it. They mar it. Mince. To use polite or moderate expressions to indicate disapproval. Don't mince your words. President Barack Obama didn't mince his words. Didn't moderate his expressions. He was just forthright and clear. Minion. A follower or underling of a powerful person. A henchman, a yes man, a lackey, a minion. Its minions have set up thousands of social media bots and other spamming weapons to drown out other content. Just the lower ranks, the foot soldiers the minions, the henchmen. That's what the minions have been doing. The followers, underlings. Mirth, amusement, usually expressed in laughter. Merriment, high spirits, mirth, joy and laughter. A further proposal to cut the salaries of senior public managers by 25% has caused both anger and mirth, amusement, people laughing. Modest. Not excessively large, elaborate or expensive. Ordinary, simple, plain. Also, of course, you can describe someone as modest if they want to refrain from rudeness. But here, modest just means simple, plain, not elaborate. They can often be seen in modest dress. She's the daughter of a Lutheran pastor, a priest. She dresses modestly, simply, plainly. Morose. Sullen and ill-tempered. Sulky, gloomy, morose. Mr. Macron's can-do political energy stands out in morose France. Sulky, gloomy France, home to 10% unemployment. Muse, a person or personified force who is the source of inspiration for a creative artist. Essentially, I'm your muse if I'm your inspiration, someone who influences you, stimulates you. Mr. Blackwell's mother was Fleming's mistress and muse, his inspiration, the person who creatively influenced him. Oblique, not explicit or direct in addressing a point. Indirect, inexplicit, roundabout. Fire at Sea has been praised for offering an oblique, a subtle, indirect, 
poetic alternative to the more conventional campaigning documentary. Opaque, not able to be seen through, not transparent, cloudy, obscure. Mr Kim is so opaque and so little is known about how decisions come about in the capital Pyongyang that deterring North Korea is fraught with difficulty. He's so opaque, he's so hard to read, so lacking in transparency and openness. Opaque. Overwrought. Of a piece of writing or a work of art, it's too elaborate, too complicated in design or construction. It's overblown, contrived, complex, exaggerated. Overwrought. She made prodigious strides as a writer and learned to temper or reduce her overwrought outpourings, her overdone, exaggerated, overblown, overwrought outpourings. Obviously, one thing I want to be clear on is that even though a lot of these words are synonyms, doesn't mean they mean exactly the same thing. I use the synonyms to give you a sense of the meaning of the word to help you with the context. If you want to know the unique origins of each word, do look up the etymology of the word using the online etymology dictionary. Anyway, pertain, which means to be appropriate, related or applicable. Synonyms are concern, to relate to, to pertain to something. Religious exceptions to the law, such as those pertaining to animal welfare, those that concern or relate to animal welfare, should ideally be ended. These exceptions relate to or are concerning regarding animal welfare. They pertain to that. To pine, to miss and long for the return of. Few DJs pine for the days of ones and twos. The possibilities of modern technology are too alluring. Few DJs long for the return of those days. Few pine for those days. Placate, to make someone less angry or hostile. To appease, pacify, mollify, placate. The government has tried to placate voters, make them less angry, less hostile, to appease them, keep them peaceful, pacify them, to placate the voters. Platitude, a remark or statement, especially one with a moral content that has been used too often to be interesting or thoughtful. It's just a platitude. It's a cliche a truism, it's banal, it's commonplace. For most of her end-of-term grilling by the Liaison Committee, she wore an aquiline scowl, aquiline meaning relating to an eagle, quibbling with the questions and when pushed, cleaving to, sticking to, evasive platitudes. That's quite a complicated sentence, but she's cleaving to, she's sticking to, evasive, like something to avoid, platitudes. So these platitudes, these cliches, help her to evade the questions, dodge the questions. So she was being grilled or questioned by the committee, and she had this eagle-like scowl or frown. She was quibbling or questioning the people who were questioning her, and when she was pushed, she stuck to these cliché platitudes to help her evade the question. Very interesting and complicated sentence. You can definitely learn quite a few words from that sentence. The main one being platitude, meaning cliché. Plethora, a large or excessive amount. An excess, an overabundance, a surplus, a plethora. Podcasts were facing fierce competition for audiences' attention from a plethora of other new digital native products, including Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. A lot of you guys are now watching YouTube instead of listening to a podcast. And thank you for doing so. And because you have done so, you have now learned that plethora means an excess, an overabundance. A huge or surplus amount of something. A plethora, wonderful word. To posit, to put forward as fact or as a basis for argument. To postulate, propound or submit. To posit something. Mr. Answer posits a ratio of expected benefits to costs of 1.4 for every project. That's what he submits. That's what he theorizes. He propounds. He suggests. This is what Mr. Ansel is putting forward as a fact for his argument. He is positing this claim. Setting out his position 
a linked word. Prodigal, a person who leaves home and behaves recklessly, but later makes a repentant return. The economist here is drawing on the biblical parable of the prodigal son as someone who makes a return after behaving recklessly. But the actual word prodigal specifically means to be reckless and wasteful rather than repentant. So if you describe someone as prodigal, you are saying they are wasteful of resources or money. And in the sentence, they talk about the prodigal Theodorin. That person must have been reckless and wasteful. Prophetic. Accurately describing or predicting what will happen in the future. Predictive visionary. Prophetic. Perspicacious. Prescient. Prophetic. This person was a prophetic voice to humanity. Someone who could have a vision of the future and could predict the future. Purist. A person who insists on absolute adherence to traditional rules or structures. Things have to be pure and according to the rules. They are a pedant, a dogmatist, perfectionist. Usually the word is insulting. It doesn't have to be, though. If someone is a purist, they are a stickler for the rules. So the sentence is, from this purist point of view, there is only one Christian church worthy of the name. It has to be the perfect one. All the others don't count. That person is a purist, and this is a purist point of view. Things have to be pure. Next word is pyre. A heap of combustible material, especially one for burning a corpse as part of a funeral. A funeral pyre is the phrase. As you can see here, this person is skillfully setting a funeral pyre for the island. A funeral bonfire, essentially. A pyre. Quack. A person who dishonestly claims to have special knowledge in some field. A swindler, a charlatan, a fraud, a quack. Usually in a medical sense. Someone's offering fake solutions to a problem. Maybe saying that bleach cures coronavirus. They are a quack. Or the sentence here from The Economist. They're talking about a vast quack-ridden diet industry. It relates to health. And quack-ridden means it's full of quacks full of swindlers, charlatans, frauds. Reticence. The quality of not revealing one's thoughts or feelings readily or easily. Being reserved, introverted, restrained, reticent. Mr. Harding is more comfortable with facts, with classic English reticence, reluctance, quietness, reserve. He buries his family's responses in footnotes and summaries. To rue something, fantastic word. To bitterly regret something, something that you've done or allowed to happen. To lament, to bemoan, to deplore that thing, to rue it, regret it. Meanwhile, Mr. Showalter will now have a long six months to rue his slavery to the save rule. To regret his slavery, his attachment to, to lament it, to bemoan it. To ruminate, he's probably ruminating. Mr. Showalter, he's thinking deeply about it. He's contemplating it, considering it, mulling over it. This French thinker was prone to worry that the first world would become a society of old people living in old houses, ruminating about old ideas, thinking, contemplating, mulling over these old ideas, to ruminate about something, to think deeply about it. Stigma. A mark of disgrace associated with a particular circumstance, quality or person. A shame, a disgrace, a dishonour, a stigma. There is a stigma against adults having fun, strong in the aftermath of the Second World War, which has now faded. A sense of disgrace or shame or dishonour, a stigma. To strut, to walk in a stiff, erect and apparently arrogant or conceited gait, a gait is like a type of stride or walking movement. A swagger, a prance, a parade. To strut around. Usually men. Dogs strut their stuff on the pavements, tricked out in tutus, hoodies, boots, overalls and trousers. They are swaggering about. Connoting a sense of arrogance or pride. To strut. Sublime. Of very great excellence or beauty awe-inspiring, awesome, majestic. 
Yet life in the ocean can still mount sublime spectacles. Amazing, awe-inspiring, brings a tear to your eye. Sublime spectacles, something to watch, like a show. Surly, bad-tempered and unfriendly. Ill-natured, grumpy, glum. Surly. Here, poverty and economic decline has led to the surly separation of the left behind. The reluctant, grumpy, angry, glum, resentful, a surly group. Syncopation. A displacement of the beat or accents in music or a rhythm so that strong beats become weak and vice versa. A disturbance in the flow, essentially. A syncopation. She dances in an assortment of lysom steps, agile steps, marvellously shedding shoes and socks as Beethoven famously shifts from solemnity, seriousness to syncopation, interrupted flow. Of course, this word is more often used metaphorically to describe a displacement or irregularity in the rhythm, a syncopation. To taunt, a remark made in order to anger, wound or provoke someone. To jeer, to jibe, to sneer, to taunt. But in the past two years, taunts have turned into deadly attacks. What was once words, jeering, sneering, is now physical, deadly attacks. Tawdry. Showy but cheap and of poor quality. Looks good but actually it's cheap and poor quality. It's gaudy, flashy, garish, tawdry. There was a festival of tawdry pop, as in full of flashes and bangs, but actually kind of rubbish, poor quality, tawdry. Temperate, relating to or denoting a region or climate characterised by mild temperatures. Temperate, Britain is fairly temperate. Mild, clement, nice weather, pleasant. It can remain temperate in such a close orbit only because Proxima is a red dwarf, we're talking about planets here, and thus much cooler than the sun. It remains temperate, mild, pleasant, clement. Terse, sparing in the use of words, not saying much. Curt, brusque, abrupt. Short, sharp, concise, terse. In a terse phone call on Thursday night, President Barack Obama paused only briefly to congratulate Mr. Netanyahu on his victory. Terse has a connotation of maybe slight annoyance, being professional, curt, a bit abrupt, terse. A tome, a book, especially a large, heavy, scholarly one. A volume, a work, your magnum opus. It is a tome to which most recent arguments about regulation and economic reform are merely annotations. So it's such a long book, it's such a tome, so full of volume and so many thousands of words, that all the other arguments are merely annotations, just small little descriptions in comparison. A tome, a large, heavy, scholarly book. Torrid, full of difficulty or tribulation. The pound, after a few torrid days, difficult, trying, testing days, torrid. I've had a torrid time, awful time. Transgression, an act that goes against the law, rule or code of conduct. An offence, a crime, a sin. In the Lord's Prayer, we talk about forgive our transgressions, forgive our sins, our crimes. Or in this sentence, we can forgive most kinds of transgression, anger, adultery, avarice, greed, but we cannot forgive absurdity. So a transgression is a sin, a breaking of a some sort of law, religious or secular. Treacherous, guilty of or involving betrayal or deception. Traitorous, disloyal, perfidious, treacherous. It sang of domineering men, treacherous women, and the manly solace of tequila, which is a drink. So if something is treacherous, it's disloyal, liable for betrayal. Vapid, offering nothing that is stimulating or challenging, completely bland, vapid. Very much like insipid, boring, 
uninspired, uninteresting, not interesting, vapid. Commentators who rely on vapid cliches, just not original, uninteresting, vapid. Vestige, a trace of something that is disappearing or no longer exists, a remnant, a remainder, a fragment. He said this would remove a lingering, a lasting vestige of the Cold War, a last trace of something that is disappearing or no longer exists, a remnant, a vestige. To vilify, to speak or write about in an abusively disparaging manner, to attack someone horribly, to castigate, disparage, denigrate, defame, to vilify someone. Its publications and social media accounts, however, have vilified Turkey, denigrated them, disparaged them, attacked them, ever since the country decided last year to open its air bases to coalition jets. To vilify. Viscous, having a thick, sticky consistency, somewhere between a solid and a liquid. Oily, imagine like crude oil, that black stuff, just slowly oozing everywhere. Gummy, glue-like, gluey, viscous. Not all barrels of oil are alike. Crude oil can be, as I said, viscous, like tar, or so light that it floats on water. I didn't know that. Volatile, liable to change rapidly and unpredictably, especially for the worse. It's tense, it's strained, it's turbulent, it's volatile. Susceptible to rapid change. The period from the 1940s to the 1970s was volatile and inflationary, turbulent and tense, volatile. Waffle, to speak about in a long way, trivial or useless matters. To prattle on, it's just hot air, it's drivel. Most voters say they know little about the candidates or their policies, some of which are pure waffle. These policies are just, don't listen to them, they're just made up crap, it's drivel, it's waffle. Obviously you can also eat waffles, like Belgian waffles, but that's a different matter. To waft, to pass or cause to pass easily or gently through, as if through air. To drift, float, glide, waft. The acrid scent of smoke wafts from his clothes, drifts, floats off his clothes. To waft, usually we're talking about a scent here, a smell. Wanton, of a cruel or violent action, deliberate and unprovoked, malicious, nasty, malevolent, spiteful. Over the decades, these Muslim non-people, without legal or any other sort of protection, had been the victims of wanton discrimination and violence, cruel, nasty, malicious, spiteful discrimination and violence, wanton. To whitewash, great word, to deliberately attempt to conceal unpleasant facts about a person or organisation, to cover up, to sweep under the carpet. In trying to whitewash the past, the government may stir up prejudice instead to conceal, cover up the past, to whitewash it. Basically, imagine a tub of paint and you're painting over a stained wall with white to cover it up. You're whitewashing it, trying to hide it. To whittle, to reduce something in size, amount or extent by gradual steps. To erode, essentially. To wear away, diminish. To whittle something down. Democrats had spent a nervous September watching their lead whittle away after Mrs. Clinton's bout of pneumonia. The lead had gradually reduced in a series of steps. It had been eroded, whittled down. Winsome, attractive or appealing in appearance or character. Engaging, charming, winning, winsome. Mr. Patterson came along as the winsome vampire, a charming vampire, winsome. Won you over. Wizened, shriveled or wrinkled with age, lined, creased, withered. His son, himself a wizened old man, lined with wrinkles. Wizened. Not to be confused with wise, 
Wizened means wrinkled with age. Wry. Using or expressing dry, mocking humour. Ironic, caustic, sardonic, satirical. Taking the mickey but in a kind of calm, clever way. This person has wry insights. Humorous, ironic, interesting insights that kind of take the piss, in this case, of Russia. And now we have the word zeal. Great energy or enthusiasm in pursuit of a cause or objective. A passion, a fervor. It was his zeal in amassing land. He had such passion, such zeal for gathering or amassing land. Here we have what the economist calls the medium difficulty words, starting with abasement. Not a basement, a cellar, a basement. The action or fact of abasing or being abased, basically humiliation or degradation. Belittlement, disgrace, abasement, to be abased or abasing someone else. But of course, Europe needs more than humility or self-abasement, self-degradation, self-humiliation, abasement. Abate, become less intense or widespread, to subside, die away, die down. The storm abated. A broad cash crunch will abate eventually. It will subside, die away, slow down, die down. Abate. Accession, the action or process of formally joining an association or institution. Joining, basically. Signing up, enrolling acceding to something. China had expected to win the status of a market economy in December, 15 years after its accession to the World Trade Organization. It acceded. Accession. Acerbic, especially of a comment or a style of speaking. Sharp, forthright, sardonic, sarcastic almost, biting, caustic, acerbic. This sentence is talking about an acerbic local blog, one that's biting, sharp in its criticisms. Acerbic. Acolyte. A person assisting the celebrant in a religious service or procession. Basically, a follower, a disciple, an assistant, a helper, an acolyte. Critics refer to a cult of acolytes around the leader, unwilling to challenge him or engage seriously with the work of non-Chomskyan scholars. Essentially, a group of disciples, acolytes, around a main leader, sometimes a religious leader. Acolyte. Acumen. The ability to make good judgments and quick decisions, typically in a particular domain. He has great acumen, astuteness, awareness, acuity. The ability to make good judgments. Literary critics admire his summer reading selections. Musicians admire his playlists. Scientists and tech entrepreneurs admire his acumen and curiosity. Talking about Obama here. They admire his ability to make good judgments and quick decisions. His astuteness and awareness. His acumen. Next word is apostle. Not too different from acolyte. A vigorous and pioneering advocate or supporter of a particular cause. A proponent a promoter, a propagandist. That's true. So an acolyte is more of a follower, whereas an apostle, even though they might follow a belief or a person, they are more active. They are promoting something, propagandizing for that thing, advocating for it. They are an apostle for it. This person is an apostle of anti-Americanism, a vigorous supporter of anti-Americanism, an apostle of it. A prize. To inform or tell. To notify someone. To let them know. To advise them. To apprise them. Secret information is often useful in apprising countries of the intentions of others. Letting them know. Informing them of the intentions of others. Spying on them helps to keep them in the know about the intentions of others. Apprise them. Keep them informed. Armada. A fleet of warships. Basically, a massive group of warships, a flotilla, squadron, and navy, essentially. An armada. 
famously the Spanish Armada that attacked England. Famous in England, anyway. This month, he also unveiled plans to send an armada of tiny spaceships powered by laser beams and equipped with all sorts of sensors. So as you notice, armada doesn't strictly have to be about boats, anything that essentially could be said to set sail, you could call an armada if there's a big enough group. Arson, the criminal act of deliberately setting fire to property. Incendiarism, pyromania. So pyro is fire, mania is being manic about it. So pyromaniac is someone who loves to start fires. In this case, someone who loves to commit arson, the act of setting fire to property. The political landscape already feels as ready to burn as any drought-stricken forest, so that throwing inflammatory statements around would be as wicked as any act of arson, any act of starting a fire in a forest. Essentially, in the political realm, certain statements can be inflammatory, start political fires. In a forest, an act of arson, starting a fire, can obviously spread and cause damage to the forest. Ascribe. To attribute something to, usually a cause. To attribute, to assign to, blame, put the blame on someone, to ascribe it to that. He had spent years training to be a neurosurgeon. His doctor first ascribed his sharp pains and dwindling frame to the demands of residency. So the doctor blamed his sharp pains. He attributed his pains to that, decided that that was the cause. He ascribed it to that. Barrage, a concentrated outpouring as of questions, blows, or sometimes bombs back in medieval times, a barrage of artillery obviously can be metaphorical. An abundance, a mass, a profusion, a barrage. Whatever the outcome of individual claims, the barrage of litigation, the abundance, the mass, the relentlessness of litigation, lawsuits basically, the barrage of litigation. Imagine guns firing with all barrels, that would create a barrage, is one way of possibly remembering it. Bevy, A large group of people or things of a particular kind. A group, a crowd, a cluster, a bevy. Of the bevy of bullet points in his new package. Essentially a group, a cluster of bullet points in the package. A bevy, a large group. Bore, B-O-O-R. An unrefined, ill-mannered person. A lout, an oaf, a ruffian. End a sentence in a preposition like by or in, and there are still people who think you are a bore, a lout, an oaf, a crude person, uneducated maybe. Bucolic, relating to the pleasant aspects of the countryside and country life. Rustic, rural, pastoral, bucolic. General Electric is now swapping its bucolic site in the countryside for a collection of warehouses on the Boston waterfront in the city. So bucolic, countryside, rustic, rural. Canonical, of an artist or work belonging to the literary or artistic canon. It's established, authoritative, part of the accepted canon. It's canonical. The medium now consists of recycling the same canonical works by European men. The same established works that we always see, the typical canon. Capricious, adjective given to sudden and unaccountable changes of mood or behaviour. Fickle, unpredictable, inconstant, changeable, capricious. But there is a body of academic work that supports the idea that elections often misfire. For one thing, voters can be capricious. It can change their mind, be fickle, inconstant, changeable, capricious. Chauvinism, excessive or prejudiced loyalty or support for one's own cause, group or gender. Jingoism, excessive patriotism, sectarianism, to be a chauvinist, definitely pejorative. You're prejudiced in support of one group. As recently as 2014, a biannual survey of right-wing attitudes in Germany 
found that xenophobia, chauvinism, anti-Semitism and authoritarian longings were declining, going down. To be a chauvinist is not a compliment. You are excessively patriotic or supporting your own group. Circumspect, wary and unwilling to take risks. Cautious, careful, circumspect. This is an area where we need to be extraordinarily careful and circumspect, he said. We're talking about life and death. You need to be very careful, very cautious, very unwilling to take too much of a gamble. You need to be circumspect. Coalesce. To come together and form one mass or whole. To merge, essentially. To unite, fuse together, bring together, amalgamate, coalesce. As they radiate away, the waves tend to coalesce, merge, to form two main shock waves. Co, bring together, so coalesce, to merge or fuse. Coffer, the funds or financial reserves of a group or institution. The resources, the money bank, the finances. This scheme drains public coffers, drains public resources and is corrupt. Empty our coffers, empty our bank account. To condone, to accept and allow behaviour that is considered morally wrong or offensive. To disregard, let pass and excuse, to condone something. You shouldn't condone violence. You shouldn't excuse it or let it pass. Contrite, feeling or expressing remorse or penitence, regret. To be regretful, sorry, apologetic. Feeling contrite, full of contrition. As the election results were coming in, a contrite, regretful, apologetic Mr Turnbull took full responsibility for the government's poor performance. He was contrite. Credulous, having or showing too great a readiness to believe things. Gullible, being naive, giving things too much credit makes you credulous. There are millions of credulous consumers gullible consumers, keen to pin their hopes of a healthier life on a random pill. Demure, to raise doubts or objections or show reluctance. To object to something, take exception, to take issue. To demure on something. Mr. Sass demures. He doesn't want to do that thing. He doesn't want less fighting between the left and the right. He wants more fighting. If he disagrees, he demures, he objects. Depravity, moral corruption, wickedness. Fantastic word. Depravity, being depraved, full of vice, perversion, deviance, wickedness, corruption. He condemned the anarchical plutocracy he lived in. Anarchical means no rules. Plutocracy means the rule by the rich he lived in. Scorning the depravity, the wickedness, the vice of modern society and its politics. He thought the world was just run by rich people not following any rules. And he scorned, he hated that depravity, that vice, that wickedness, that corruption. To deride, to express contempt for, to ridicule, to mock, jeer, scoff, take the mickey out of, to deride something. Mr Trudeau's domestic critics, so far a minority, deride him, mock him as Prime Minister Selfie, for posing incessantly with fans and celebrities. Next word is diatribe, a forceful, bitter verbal attack against someone or something. A tirade, a harangue, we saw that earlier, an onslaught, a diatribe. CNN was wrong to turn one disgruntled, meaning unhappy, passenger's Facebook diatribe into headline news. This one person's Facebook rant tirade. They shouldn't have made it a headline. A diatribe. A dictum. A short statement that expresses a general truth or principle. A saying. A proverb. A maxim. A truism. An axiom. Sometimes the old army dictum, don't volunteer for anything, must be broken. 
So there was a rule or a saying in the army, don't volunteer for anything. And this person is saying that dictum, that belief, that saying, that maxim, should sometimes be broken. Diffuse, spread out over a large area. Scattered, dispersed, not concentrated. The political economy of trade is treacherous. Its benefits, though substantial, are diffuse. Meaning there's lots of benefits to trade, but the benefits are spread out, they're diffuse, they're spread among many people, they're not concentrated in one area. So it's harder to tell what the benefits are. If something is diffuse, it's spread out over a large area. To dilate, to make or become wider, larger or more open, often the pupils of your eyes. To enlarge something, expand it, to dilate it. By being able to increase heartbeat while dilating, expanding, enlarging blood vessels, theobromine can help reduce high blood pressure because it helps to dilate or expand the blood vessels. Discordant, disagreeing or incongruous. Divergent, opposing, clashing, contradicting, being discordant. It represents an opening of musical trade routes between two often discordant sides of the world. So these two sides are often opposing, they're often discordant. This person is trying to open a route between them. To divest, to rid yourself of something that you no longer want or require, usually a business investment or interest. So far, the protesters have managed to persuade 220 cities to divest some of their holdings, to uninvest essentially, it's the opposite of investing, to divest, to take out your investment, to divest yourself from something, usually like tobacco companies or arms manufacturers. A lot of people want companies to divest from them, uninvest in them. Next word, droll. Curious or unusual in the way that one provokes dry amusement. Something is droll if it's funny, humorous, amusing, in a slightly unusual, curious way. This person will present a series of droll paintings inspired by the fast-moving pop culture that has emerged in Lagos, Nigeria. So those paintings are funny, amusing, in a slightly unusual way, maybe with an element of sarcasm. They are droll. Echelon. Lovely word. A level or rank in an organisation, a profession or society. A level, a rank, a grade. What echelon are you at? The social shock of the arrival of online education will be substantially greater if it devours or eats, ravishes the top echelon of public universities. So these people are worried because online education, I guess which is what you're getting right now, might eat or hurt the top echelon, the top rank, top grade of public universities. The best of the public universities, the top echelon of public universities. To eddy, of water, air or smoke, to move in a circular way. To swirl, whirl, spiral usually talking about water, air, or smoke hair. Above all, it could be metaphorical, of course, but above all, Hokusai was a master of line and pattern, inscribing or writing his forms within contours that eddy, that swirl and spill, like the currents of a mountain stream. To eddy is to whirl and spiral in a circular way. An effigy, a sculpture or model of a person, a statue, a usually mocking figure or statuette of somebody. Often they burn effigies of Guy Fawkes, a bit like a scarecrow maybe, like not really like a human, more like a mockery of something, an effigy of someone. Often in the G7 meetings, there are effigies outside of each of the leaders where people take the mickey out of them. They deride them, to use a word we saw earlier, using an effigy. Elucidate, to make something clear. To explain, make plain, illuminate. One was from almost 600 people who had completed a questionnaire intended to elucidate the different tendencies of people. To make clear, to explain, to make it plain and illuminate. 
to elucidate. Lucid means clear, so to elucidate means to make something clear. Endemic, of a disease or a condition, regularly found among particular people or in a certain area. It is endemic here. It is local, spread everywhere in this region. One of the mysteries of epidemiology is why Asia does not suffer from yellow fever. The disease is endemic spread everywhere in Africa, the continent where it evolved. So the disease is local to Africa and it's a mystery why it hasn't reached Asia. Epistemology, great word. The theory of knowledge, how do we know things? Often in terms of how do we know our knowledge is valid? How do we know the scope of our knowledge? Where does it start? Where does it finish? What do we know? Epistemology. If something is an epistemological dilemma, it's a dilemma in terms of what do we know, what don't we know? The only way to know for sure is to run the experiment, Mr. Lind's exotic epistemology notwithstanding. So Mr. Lind obviously has an exotic or unusual epistemological view, a view on what we can know and what we can't know. And this person says we should experiment. For example, I could ask you, the YouTube watcher, do you really know that you exist? That would be an epistemological question, a question of how much we know. Epithet, an adjective or descriptive phrase expressing a quality characteristic of a person, usually a term of abuse. Don't give me that epithet, that name, that label, that smear. An epithet usually picks on one characteristic of that person or thing. Preposterous and absurd were the milder, the weaker epithets that could be overheard in the din. So someone was getting abused verbally, smeared, labelled, and some of the weaker or milder epithets or slurs were just preposterous and absurd. That's what that person was being called. Errant. Erring or straying from the proper course or standards. It's offending, it's guilty, it's culpable, it's errant. It's an error because it strays from the proper course of decorum or standards. He could admit the error and fire the errant speechwriter. I think Melania Trump had copied inadvertently, or speechwriter for her, had copied another speech in plagiarism. And so now he wants to fire the errant speechwriter, the person who was guilty, the person who had committed the offence, was culpable for some sort of mistake. They were errant. They'd made an error, essentially. Esoteric intended for or likely to be understood by only a small number of people with a specialised knowledge or interest. Abstruse, another great word. Obscure, arcane, esoteric. The subjects at hand often sound esoteric, if not silly. The questions may prove more than merely academic. So the questions seem academic, only to be studied in like universities. It sounds esoteric, obscure, but actually it could be relevant. The questions may prove more interesting than that. Maybe you listening to this have some esoteric knowledge about a subject that most other people don't know about. Some really arcane, obscure knowledge. Exemplar, a person or thing serving as a typical example or excellent model. It's almost always praising. You are the exemplar, the paragon of this thing, the epitome of the perfect example. At times, Utopia, the book, seems less an exemplar, a perfect example of idealism, and more of a satire on it, a mockery of it. So just think, it sounds very similar. An exemplar of something is a perfect example of that thing, usually praising. You are the exemplar of a great student. In fact, I would tell you that. If you get to the end of this really long video, you are an exemplar of someone looking to improve their vocabulary. An ideal, perfect example. To extol, I'm extolling you there. I'm praising you enthusiastically. I'm extolling you. Going wild about, to wax lyrical about. To extol someone, to praise them enthusiastically. Patient advocates are likely to attend and extol the benefits 
of the treatments they received. That's often a phrase it goes with, to extol the benefits of something. You might extol the benefits of vitamin D because you think it's amazing, to praise it enthusiastically. Feel free to extol the benefits of this video with some comments. A facade, great word, interesting to pronounce. The face of a building, that it can be used and is often used metaphorically. The front, the frontage, the exterior. Someone's face might be their facade though. Here they're talking literally the grey stone facade or the front or the face of a building. But I could say the woman presented a stern facade, a stern face, a stern expression. You can use it for people too. Fetid, smelling extremely unpleasant, stinking, smelling, foul smelling. A fetid smog is one that smells disgusting. Florid, quite the opposite. A bit like flowery, using unusual words or complicated rhetorical constructions, speaking in a really complicated way, being extravagant, grandiloquent. Even that word itself, grandiloquent, sounds quite florid, doesn't it? Like you're using very flowery language. This governor was using florid metaphors, really over the top, extravagant, flowery, grandiloquent metaphors. To flout, to openly disregard, to defy something, to refuse to obey something, to go against it. Usually flouting the rules is the phrase used. This person relies on its members to shame and discourage people who flout the norms. A norm is kind of like an expected traditional rule and these people are flouting those norms. Disregarding them, defying them, refusing to go along with them, flouting them. A foible, a minor weakness or eccentricity in someone's character. It's an idiosyncrasy. It's a peculiarity. It's a foible. It's just one of their foibles. Don't worry about it. This person had an outsized, a huge personality. Among his peculiarities, his foibles, he had a pet tiger that he showed off to guests. A weird thing about that person. A foible. Not too serious, though. To forestall, to prevent or obstruct something from happening by taking action ahead of time. To preempt, to get in there before, to get ahead of events, to forestall them. To forestall a social crisis, governments should consider a tax on robots. To prevent or anticipate, to preempt that crisis, to get in there first, governments should tax robots. They should forestall that crisis. Get in there first, that's where the origin is for. To get in there before. And stall is to stop. To forestall something. Frenetic. Fast and energetic in a rather wild, uncontrolled way. Frantic, frenzied, frenetic. In this case, frenetic multitasking. Surfing the web while watching TV, while listening to music is a formula for distraction rather than good management. I hope you're not frenetically doing several things in a frantic way and instead concentrating on this. But it's up to you, of course. Try to be calm rather than frenetic, energetic in a wild way. Gore, bold, impudent behavior. Insolence, audacity, nerve. With enough gall, boldness, and entrepreneurial spirit, Anyone can end up driving a Porsche. If you have enough boldness, nerve, audacity, and gall, then you can do anything you want. I think it came from the belief that the gallbladder provided you courage or something. To have gall. To galvanize, to shock or excite someone typically into taking action. To jolt them, impel them to do something. We need an external shock to come along and catalyze true reform, to make it happen, galvanize it into action, to jolt it, shock it into action, to galvanize. Also using chemistry for chemical reactions. A gambit, a device, action, or opening remark, typically entailing a degree of risk, often used in chess, the Queen's Gambit, for example, Netflix series. A plan, a scheme, a strategy. A gamble, 
kind of linked to that, a calculated risk, a gambit. What began as a gambit, a calculated risk, to hold together his divided Tory party is turning into an alarmingly close contest. So it was a gamble and now it's risking not paying off. It's a gambit. To goad, to provoke or annoy someone so as to stimulate some reaction, to spur them, to prod them, to egg them on. Oh, come on, just do it. You're goading them. Her words were meant to goad officials into action, to provoke something to goad, usually in a sneering way. It's an unpleasant word. You're provoking or annoying someone to cause an action. Gossamer, used to refer to something very light, thin and insubstantial or delicate. Gauzy, fine, gossamery. The gossamer threads that tie the two halves together. To gouge, to overcharge and swindle. They do not want monopolists, people with monopoly control, single control, to gouge consumers, to overcharge them money. To swindle steal from them, essentially. If there's nowhere else you can go, it's a monopoly, then you're easily gouged, overcharged. Grand delinquent, we saw this earlier. Pompous or extravagant in language, florid as we saw. Pompous, bombastic, magnalinquent. I hope I'm not too grandalinquent, pompous on this channel. The authors gave it a rather grandalinquent name. The desire to force destiny or create serendipity. It's extravagant, it's too much. Grandalinquent. To grouse. To complain pettily, to grumble, to moan, groan, protest and grouse. Some economists grouse about the rules, which can interfere with the smooth functioning of labour markets. They groan, they protest, they grouse. Hapless. Unfortunate. Unlucky. Out of luck. They are hapless. Poor them. Many fans argued that the spectacle, the scene of Hapless pitchers, unlucky pitchers, feebly, weakly trying to fend off blazing fastballs, was turning their at-bats into a mockery of the game. These poor, unlucky, unfortunate pitchers, they are hapless. They can't do anything to stop the fastballs. Homage, or homage, depending on how you want to pronounce it, is a special honour or respect shown publicly. A tribute, pay homage to something. An acknowledgement and admiration. Over the past year, numerous young directors have been paying gushing homage to the movies that, which enchanted them in their youth. Public praise. To pay homage or homage to things. To pay tribute to that thing. Imbue. To inspire or permeate with a feeling or quality. To fill, suffuse, saturate, imbue something with. Physically, or metaphorically. Some feminists argue that the very framework of economics is imbued, filled, suffused with forms of sexism. Immutable, unchanging over time or unable to be changed, permanent, steadfast, set in its ways, immutable. To mutate is to change, so if something is immutable it won't change. These things are not immutable facts. They are not permanent facts. They are not immutable, they can change. An impasse, a situation in which no progress is possible, especially because of disagreement. A deadlock, a stalemate, a dead end. The Catalan impasse is a part of wider Spanish gridlock. Nothing is changing, no one can pass. A bit like a road, where the road is so narrow that the two cars can't pass each other, that is an impasse. No one can pass. It's gridlock. Inculcate. To instill an attitude, idea or habit by persistent instruction. I often try to inculcate definitions into you by just repeating a lot of the definitions. I'm trying to inspire and infuse you with that knowledge. The tests and ceremonies were to start inculcating a sense of common values that had previously been lacking. They're trying to instill that idea. This can be a good thing or a bad thing, but to inculcate is basically to 
teach through repetition, persistence. Indolence, avoidance of activity or exertion, essentially laziness, idleness, slothfulness, indolence. The indolence of a society brought up to expect that oil riches will be lavished upon them is another large hurdle. Talking about Saudi Arabia. So people, they're saying, are indolent. They're being idle and lazy because they're expecting the oil riches just to be poured all over them, lavished upon them. Indolence. Inquest. A judicial inquiry to ascertain the facts relating to an incident. Find out what happened. An inquest is an inquiry, an investigation, an inquisition into something. A jury at a second inquest, inquiry, ruled that they were unlawfully killed. You're questing into a matter. You're searching into a matter. It's an inquest. Irascible. Having or showing a tendency to be easily angered. Irritable sounds very similar. Quick-tempered. Short-tempered. Irascible. He survived, but some of his contemporaries thought that the accident changed his personality from pleasant to irascible, easily irritated. Itinerant, traveling from place to place, peripatetic, wandering, roving. Her first America set film is a freewheeling road movie in which an 18 year old escapes a dysfunctional family by joining a group of itinerant young misfits. These people just rove around like nomads, wandering from place to place They are itinerant. Laconic, of a person, speech, or style of writing using very few words. Brief, concise, terse, to the point, laconic. This person, this author, had a laconic style. They had a style of being very brief and to the point. And so shall I. That is what laconic means. Largesse. Generosity in bestowing money or gifts upon others. Being liberal with your money, free with your money. Munificent, bountiful. Being generous in bestowing gifts or money. Showing largesse. All else equal, such largesse should indeed give the economy some temporary vim. Spirit, vigour. So I guess they're talking about the government here. Their largesse, their bestowing tax relief or Stimulus should give the economy some vigour. Next word is leery, L-W-E-R-Y. Cautious or wary due to realistic suspicions. Being careful, as we saw earlier, circumspect, on your guard. I'm leery about that. The past two decades have left working class voters in many countries leery of globalisation. Careful about it, cautious about it. They're a bit wary, a little bit scared, a little bit concerned. They are leery of globalisation. Limpid, especially about writing or music, clear and accessible, melodious, sweet sounding, lucid, clear, understandable, limpid. Not to be confused with limp, which means weak. Something that is limpid is clear, smooth and understandable. Unlike many writers of Spanish, He preferred short, simple sentences, and they gave his writing a limpid intensity. Plain, accessible, smooth-sounding intensity. Limpid. Loquacious. Talkative. Tending to talk a great deal. Voluble. Communicative. I am loquacious, some people say. I talk quite a lot in my videos. But this person, Edwina, is as loquacious, talkative, as her husband was laconic. Do you remember laconic from a few words ago? Meaning brief, concise, terse? Well, this person is the opposite. They are loquacious, talkative, communicating a lot. Lucid. Very similar to limpid that we saw a second ago. Something that is lucid is clear or clear thinking, rational, sane, straightforward, lucid. His style is lucid, rational, clear-cut, Not crazy and discordant and chaotic. Clear, simple, sane, rational. His judgments are scrupulously fair and lucid. Clear thinking. Malign. Evil in nature or effect. Mal is bad. 
So malign means harmful, bad, malevolent. There is a malign force that the monster represents, a bad, evil, harmful force. It's malign. The opposite of malign is benign, meaning good. So you can have malign tumors that are bad and benign tumors which are good. Next word is maudlin, self-pitying or sentimental, lachrymose, causing tears, emotional, maudlin. The voters at home have tired of his maudlin theatrics. He's just pretending, making stuff up to make people emotional and tearful. And people are tired of it. It's too sentimental, too emotional, too maudlin. Milieu, your social environment essentially. Your background, the backdrop to events, the sphere in which something is happening. Often a movie might have an interesting milieu, an interesting backdrop to the movie. Or your personal milieu, who are you surrounded by? What's your sphere like? In this case, we're talking about a seething milieu of particles surrounded by so many particles careening around space-time. So what are you surrounded by? What's the background that you have? What's your milieu? French word, of course. Mire, to be involved in something usually difficult, to be entangled, mired in something like mired in a swamp, a quagmire is a good example, to be tangled up, embroiled in something. Mrs. Park is hopelessly mired, tangled up in an ever-deepening influence-peddling scandal. She's mired in scandal. She can't avoid the implications. Modish, conforming to or following what is currently popular and fashionable. I think in French, à la mode is what is popular. So if something is modish, it's modern, trendy, it's in. It's in with the kids. <laughs> with these modish safety demonstrations becoming the norm, the question is, what do they accomplish? It's fashionable, it's modish, it's trendy. Morose. Sullen and ill-tempered. Sulky, gloomy, morose. Mr. Macron's can-do political energy stands out in morose France. We saw this earlier, but it's good to reinforce. Morose means sulky, gloomy, ill-tempered, grumpy, essentially. Nascent. Just coming into existence and beginning to display signs of future potential. It's new, burgeoning, nascent. It's emerging, it's just beginning, it's the dawning of something new. Weakening the legislature in a nascent or new democracy will not fix corruption by itself. This is a nascent democracy. It's just starting off. It's not long established. It's nascent, it's new. The next word here is natty. Of a person or an article of clothing smart and fashionable, that's a natty outfit, that's stylish, dapper, debonair, usually like a well-fitted, bespoke suit. Very natty. Often talking about men here. Bet a lot of you don't know that word, natty. The British Museum, the National Gallery and the Wallace Collection have all flirted with natty continental leaders. Stylish, usually men, debonair in lovely tailored suits or nice outfits, dressing in a natty way, smart, fashionable way. Nexus. A connection or series of connections linking two or more things. It's the union, the link, where things come together. Some chapters read like a thriller because they offer a microscopic look at the unwholesome nexus. Unwholesome means bad, essentially, not good for you. The nexus, the link between Germany's media, politics and judiciary. System of judges and courts. So the nexus is where they all meet where they all unite, that's the nexus, that's the connection. To be nonplussed of a person, surprised and confused so much that they are unsure how to react. I'm just nonplussed, I'm baffled, confounded, confused, I don't know how to react, I'm nonplussed. Internet commentators seemed nonplussed by what seemed to be a venerable institution validating teenage slang. Like this venerable, wise and respected institution, Oxford, was validating, confirming teenage slang, maybe in the dictionary. And internet commentators were nonplussed. They were baffled. Why are they doing this? They're surprised, confused, nonplussed. Normative. 
Establishing, relating to, or deriving a standard or norm. Setting a standard. Traditional, normative. This person was highly critical of the normative thought of his time and favoured free trade. As we saw earlier, that's just the norm. That's just the standard. And this person is tired of this normative thought. Or if the judge's rulings are normative, they're setting a standard, they're deciding what should become the norm. Setting what is normal and expected. Normative. To opine. To hold and state one's opinion, simply. To suggest, say and declare. To opine on a matter. The voters may opine on the principle. Give their say. Declare your opinion. Pallid. Pale, typically because of poor health. Pasty, white, wan. Its protagonist played by the suitably pallid, pale and slender Tom Hiddleston. You know, Loki in The Avengers? He's pallid, pale, pasty, white. Panache, flamboyant confidence of style or manner. Self-assured, stylish, flair. Maybe to dress with panache means that you're natty in your style of dress. This person had speed and panache, flair, confidence, assurance. Great word. Paragon. A person or thing regarded as a perfect example of a quality. The model, the exemplar, as we saw earlier, the epitome. You are a paragon of virtue. The model of virtue. Or here, Odebrecht is a paragon of modernity. A perfect example of modernness, modernity. To parry something. To answer evasively, like in fencing. To fend something off, to evade it, sidestep it, avoid it. This president-elect has shown a remarkable ability to dodge and parry and reverse himself on everything. Parrying questions is to evade questions, evade the real answer. Penchant or penchant, depending on how you want to pronounce it. A strong or habitual liking for something or a tendency to do something. I have a penchant for French art, a fondness, an inclination, a preference. This person was an elegant writer with a penchant for playful eruditio. I don't know what eruditio means, but whatever it is, this writer had a fondness, a preference for it, a penchant for it. Pithy, terse, laconic, but vigorously expressive. Concise and compact, but witty, pithy. Academics are not known for brevity, shortness in writing. And physics does not lend itself to pithy, witty, short introductions. Usually the textbooks are really long, like tones, not pithy and short. These next two words seem to have come up already in the list. I'm not quite sure why they're repeating some words, but I guess it's a good test to see whether you've retained the definition. Plethora. A large or excessive amount, an excess and overabundance of surplus. Did you know that plethora meant a surplus, an excess, an overabundance? Did you remember that? I gave you the example of thanking you because there are a plethora of things you could be watching, a huge overabundance of things you could be watching, and you're choosing to watch this YouTube video. And again, with the next word, to posit something, to put it forward as your position, the basis for your argument. To postulate, submit, propound a position is to posit something. This person is positing a ratio of benefits to costs of 1.4. That is their position. They are positing that, putting it forward as the basis of their argument. But now for a newer word, presage. To be a sign or warning of an imminent event, typically an unwelcome one. It points to something, it means something, it signifies something. It presages a new dawn of an era. It signals something's happening. It's a sign of it or a warning. Stock markets are set to open down today and the election could presage, could forewarn to signify a longer slump if investors feel that the uncertainty generated will harm growth. It's a harbinger, it's a warning of things to come. It presages something. Prolific, of an artist, author or composer producing many works, 
productive, creative, inventive. A huge amount of work means that you are prolific. It is true that few artists have been so prolific, have created so much work. On average, he released a studio album every single year. Talking about Prince here, he's prolific, creates so much, so productive. A proxy, it's a new one. A person authorized to act on behalf of another. Your representative, your stand-in, your substitute. A proxy vote is where maybe you tell someone else to vote in your place. Maybe because you're ill and you can't leave your bed or something. This person's sister was elected prime minister as his proxy, his substitute, his stand-in, his representative. Prudish, having a tendency to be easily shocked, usually on matters relating to sex. To be puritanical, prim, a goody-goody. Prudish, you're scared by things that are rude. You are prudish. Several Pacific nations ban cross-dressing. Another hand-me-down from prudish Victorians. So Victorians in Britain are famous for being shocked about anything sexual. They are puritanical, based on the religious movement of Puritans, keeping things pure. They're shocked by rudeness, they are prudish. To qualm or have qualms. An uneasy feeling of doubt, worry or fear. You need to allay my qualms, my misgivings, my doubts, my reservations. I have qualms about him going out late at night. Uneasy feeling about it. They have qualms here, I think, about the police force's quality in terms of how they handle demonstrators. Worries, fears, doubts, qualms. To quell something, to suppress it, usually in a forceful way. To quell something, to soothe it, pacify it. To quell the violence is to calm it down sometimes with force. But it can be positive. To quell someone's fears means to calm them down, to make them peaceful and pacified. If you have enough money, you can put it into the system and quell fears, calm fears of there being a crisis. To quibble, lovely word. To argue or raise objections about a trivial matter. Maybe someone who comments on this video and says, I noticed a tiny, tiny error in minute 353 where there was one word misspelled. That would be a quibble. A tiny bit of criticism, nitpicking one detail. Like, it wouldn't be a quibble to say this is a terrible video, because that's a big criticism. But a quibble would be like a minor, minor criticism about one tiny aspect. The sentence here says, One can quibble with some of the detail. Perhaps the rate should rise again, for example. Which is the minor detail that I'm going to nitpick and criticise. Quotidian. Ordinary or everyday, especially when we're talking about something mundane, a bit boring. It's day-to-day, -day, it's average, it's quotidian, nothing special. These mystics, these special figures of mystery, are unfettered, unchained by the quotidian. They don't bother with the day-to-day -day stuff. They connect straight with the divine. Something that happens every day and is nothing special is quotidian. Wonderful word. Next word is recalcitrant. Having an obstinately uncooperative attitude. Not cooperating towards authority. Being intractable. Uncooperative. Not playing along. Being recalcitrant. In a move that may test the metal, the courage, of recalcitrant republicans. These Republicans are recalcitrant, they're not cooperating, they're not helping out, they're not playing as a team, they are being obstinate and stubborn. Recalcitrant. Next word, recant. Say that you no longer hold an opinion or belief. You renounce something, disavow it, retract your statement. Recant. Recant is like a belief, so to recant is to say I don't have that belief anymore. Analysts who predict turmoil, chaos, are warned to shut up or recant, say that they're wrong. Salient, the most noticeable or important part. Conspicuous, noticeable, obvious, salient. The reason for that emphasis may in part be because of the salient threat of terrorism. The threat of terrorism is obvious, it's conspicuous, noticeable, important, it is salient, it stands out. 
In geology and geography, you can have a salient cliff, one that stands out from the background. Sardonic, grimly mocking or cynical. Taking the mickey, satirical, sarcastic, ironic. A sardonic expression or a sardonic remark. Ms. Jefferson, it must be said, is a master of the arched eyebrow sardonic quip. So to arch your eyebrows, you can imagine your slightly taking the mickey in what you're saying, and a quip is like a quick joke. So a sardonic quip is one where you're being sarcastic. You're saying things that you know aren't quite true, just so you can mock somebody. Savant, a learned person, especially a distinguished scientist, an intellectual, scholar, sage, usually associated with high IQ. I think there's a savant family, but anyway. The more a society treats its business people as hero savants based on their professional successes, elevating them to positions of political power. Talking about treating business people as hero scholars, intellectual savants. So a savant is a high IQ, learned, educated person. Next word we have here is soliloquy. The act of speaking one's thoughts aloud when you're on your own, especially by a character in a play. Almost like the word solo, meaning on your own. So you're speaking on your own, that's a soliloquy, a monologue. Again, mono means one, you're on your own. And log is like logos, word. So you're speaking alone, just like soliloquy is speaking your thoughts aloud when you're on your own. A personal private speech to yourself. Famously, there's Hamlet's soliloquy when he talked about to be or not to be. He was looking at a skull and he was speaking to himself. So that was a monologue, a soliloquy. Stigma, a mark of disgrace associated with a particular circumstance, quality or person. A shame, a disgrace, a dishonor. You might have seen this one. A stigma against adults having fun, strong in the aftermath of the Second World War. Yes, we saw this example as faded. So the sense of shame, disgrace, dishonor, the stigma has now faded. There isn't a sense of shame anymore in having fun. Stipulate, great word. To demand or specify, typically as part of a bargain, contract or agreement. I stipulate that I get the house if we ever break up. To set down your conditions, to lay down what you want, to demand through a particular caveat what will happen. In trade negotiations, size matters. Larger economies can stipulate, lay down, terms that suit them. One such term would be a stipulation. Stratum, a thin layer within any structure. A level, a class, or as we saw earlier, an echelon. The lower stratum, the higher stratum. But exalting or praising Western aviation security to a higher stratum than is found in Africa is a delusion. So saying that it's a higher level, a higher stratum than that security found in Africa, it's misguided, it's a delusion. Subpoena. Now I know it's pronounced in quite a different way to the way it's spelled, but you pronounce it subpoena, even though it's written sub poena, it's subpoena. It's a court judgment or writ ordering a person to attend that court, summoning that person, mandating or forcing them to come. You must come and present yourself to the court, otherwise you can go to jail. That is a subpoena. And being served a subpoena is when someone comes around and just says, look, here's an envelope, it's saying that the court needs you here. Subpoenas issued by a federal grand jury earlier this year demanded that the Port Authority hand over the person's personal travel records. They're summoning it, mandating that it occur. Usually it's a person, though, that they're bringing a subpoena. Syntax, the arrangement of words and phrases to create well-formed sentences in a language. How you arrange words such that the sentences make sense and sound good. That is syntax. And they're saying here that the author had an idiosyncratic syntax. Idiosyncratic, as you may know, means unique to that person. So the author had a syntax, a way of arranging words and phrases that was unique to them. Tenant, a principle or belief. There was a movie out called Tenant. I don't know if that's related, but anyway. So a tenant is a principle or belief, similar to the words doctrine, a precept, a creed, 
a dogma, a tenant. I hold these tenants to be true. In these courts in the 1960s, 70s and 80s, religious accommodation was a liberal tenant. So to allow religions certain exceptions was a belief of the liberal judges. It was a tenant, a creed, a doctrine that they had. And now we have tout to attempt to sell something typically by pestering people in an aggressive manner. You're touting tickets to a concert that you bought online. You're trying to sell them off. Typically, you're selling something in a slightly dubious or aggressive way. These providers have been touting products such as coffee pots that turn on when the alarm clock rings. Kind of probably pretty useless stuff, but they're touting it, they're pestering people to buy it. I wouldn't say it endorses a good sin in them. It's more like to try and flog off to sell it. Urbane of a person, usually a man, someone who is courteous and refined in manner. There are other words to describe such females, but for a man, you might say he's urbane. Polite, courteous, refined, higher class. Whereas the synonyms we see here, suave, sophisticated, debonair, maybe dressing in a natty way, as we saw earlier. Beneath its urbane surface, the person's music is a crusade. So on the surface, the music is sophisticated, suave, refined, urbane. But underneath, it's aggressive, a crusade. Verbose, using or expressed in more words than are needed. Verbosity, using too many verbs, too many words in general. Being loquacious, long-winded, garrulous, wordy. I try not to be too verbose in these videos. I try to give you enough information, but without saying too much, using too many words. In recent years, these things have become particularly verbose, bombarding consumers with any small detail that might enhance the brand, saying way too much, too many words, it's verbose. And now we have to wet, pronounced in the same way as W-E-T, but it's W-H-E-T, to wet, to excite or stimulate, usually a desire, interest or appetite. Oh, let's wet your appetite with this appetizer. Or I want to wet your appetite in football by showing you a match. Synonyms would be arouse, trigger, rouse up something. Often using the phrase to wet people's appetite or to wet someone's appetite. It says here that sham democracy often wets people's appetite for the real thing. As in it makes people excited to have or interested in having the real thing. And now the time has come to cover level three vocabulary, the most difficult words. So well done for getting this far. Are you ready for the most interesting, difficult words, unusual words that The Economist thinks will be relevant for your GRE test? Let's do it. First word is abeyance, a state of temporary disuse or suspension. It's not happening right now, it's in abeyance, in suspense, remission, in reserve not active currently. With the euro crisis in abeyance, as in not happening at the moment, but maybe it will in the future, oil prices became the latest source of worry. So one of the crises was in abeyance. It's temporarily suspended, but may come back. Abeyance. To abjure, to solemnly renounce or recant, as we saw earlier, a belief, a cause or a claim. To abjure something is to relinquish it, reject it, disavow it. There is a particular pledge that you can take where you abjure tax increases of any sort forever. You reject them and say you will never ever do them. You're abjuring it, disavowing it. Anodyne. Not likely to cause offence or disagreement. Dull, bland, inoffensive, innocuous, nothing special, not going to excite any interest not going to galvanize any interest. It's anodyne. The prospect of a day spent milling around at the G20 summit this week with nothing to show for it but an anodyne communique, basically a boring document laying out the principles, must be depressing. If something is anodyne, it's so bland, doesn't say anything special or interesting. To bilk. To obtain or withhold money from someone by deceit or without justification. Basically, to fraudulently swindle someone, defraud them, deceive them. 
to bilk them of money. Partly because they are not paid properly, they bilk the system and get away with it, thanks to political contacts. So to bilk the system means you're defrauding it, maybe claiming benefits that are not owed to you, or swindling people who fall for your schemes. You're bilking them. Usually it's obtaining something rather than withholding it, where you kind of steal but through fraud. It's not outright robbery, it's just abusing the system, to bilk the system. A canard. An unfounded rumour or story. A piece of gossip, a whisper that you hear on the street. A little bird told me, that's a canard. So they thought they had found someone who was the real Satoshi, I think that's the founder of Bitcoin, or he pretended to be, but this turned out to be an embarrassing canard, an embarrassing piece of gossip that wasn't based on reality. That's just a canard. Catalyst, a personal thing that precipitates an event, sparks it off, gives it impetus, stimulus, it's a catalyst for change. Yeah, and there you go. The example here was catalyst for change. It's often a phrase that's used with the word catalyst is to be a catalyst for change. It means you spark change, you cause things to change. And then obviously cars have catalytic converters. They're converting one substance to another, causing it to change. So it all revolves around a catalyst being something that causes something else, gives it a stimulus. Catharsis, fantastic word. The process of release and relief of strong or repressed, held in emotions. A big emotional release in a movie, maybe when a man confesses his love or someone just goes crazy and lets out all their anger. That's an act of catharsis. You're just releasing all your repressed, held in emotions. This explorer had a rush of amazement and catharsis when a pinnacle, a summit was reached. Cloture, this is a political word, a procedure for ending a debate and taking a vote. So if you want to stop discussing and actually vote on a matter, you invoke cloture, pronounced in an interesting way. Pretty much always used with the verb invoke. To invoke cloture means you're ending the debate, let's have a vote. And in this case, they did not have the support of 60 senators to invoke that cloture and end the filibuster. The filibuster is a way of talking so that you don't have a vote. Whereas the opposite is cloture, where you close off the debate and then have a vote. Compendium, a collection of concise but detailed information about a particular subject, a compilation essentially, an anthology of that thing. Usually quite a comprehensive document, it's a compendium. He relies on crowdsourced compendium of fishermen's tales, a huge compilation, a gathering together, a library, a compendium, of fishermen's tales, which is usually a phrase used to talk about canards, pieces of gossip that aren't really true. It's a fisherman's tale. You could almost think of the word as like encyclopedia, a compendium on a subject. Conscript, to enlist someone in a compulsory way. They have to do it. There's no way out. You're drafting them, recruiting them, calling them up. Most Jewish Israelis are conscripted into the military. They're forced in they don't have a choice to be conscripted. That's a process of conscription. To cosset, to care for and protect in an overindulgent way, to spoil someone, often a child, to indulge them, to pander to them. So Scotland's politicians apparently were affording to cosset oil firms. They're protecting them, indulging them, pandering to them. Coterie. A small group of people with shared interests or tastes. A clique, a circle, the inner circle. He ruled through a tight coterie of loyal aides. An inner circle, shut off to outsiders, all with a shared ambition or shared interests. A coterie. Daguerreotype. A photograph taken by an early photographic process employing an iodine sensitized silver plate and mercury vapor. You don't need to know all that detail, a daguerreotype is essentially a very early style of photographs in like the 19th century using ancient technology. Talked about in this sentence, the earliest applications of multimedia for remembering dead people were the post-mortem daguerreotypes. Early, obviously black and white photographs used by grieving Victorians. 
So if you want to talk in a very fancy way about a very old style of photograph in the 19th century, you'd say it's a daguerreotype. Dilettante, a person who cultivates an area of interest without real commitment, an amateur. They dabble in something, they potter about, they tinker about in it. Each of those words are good to know, much more useful than daguerreotype. If you're a dabbler, a potterer, a tinkerer, you do things a bit like maybe a little bit of gardening, you're not an expert, or you play the guitar, you're not an expert, but you just like to dabble around and see what you can do. You are an amateur, a dilettante. And in this sentence, they talk about, this is not the work of a dilettante, an amateur, but a strong follow-up to her claim short stories that came out in 2007. So this is not the work of a mere amateur, this is a professional. This is not a dabbler, someone who dabbles in something or potters about and does things casually. This is not an amateur or dilettante, it's a professional. Someone who is committed to their field. Great words. Diurnal. Talk about animals usually active in the daytime. The opposite to nocturnal. Nocturnal means active at night. Diurnal means active during the day. People walk on two legs like most avian bird species. They are also largely diurnal, They're active during the day, like all humans are. Well, some of you may be uh, active during the night all the time and don't wake up during the day, but normally people are diurnal, active during the day. And people rely on sight as their primary sense, with the sun being out. Dross, lovely word. Something regarded as crap, worthless. It's rubbish. It's debris, junk is the origin of the word, like just washed up on the shore, just useless dross. Flotsam and jetsam, debris, rubbish. Some of the best properties could be sold quickly, but the dross, the rubbish stuff, might take years to offload and sell. You have to tout it quite heavily to sell it, or maybe bilk someone corruptly. Dyspeptic, of or having indigestion or consequent irritability or depression. Not being able to digest your meal is the literal sense of the word, but what does that cause metaphorically? Usually a lot of anger, irritability. So that's why synonyms for dyspeptic are being bad-tempered, irritable, short-tempered. Every couple of years or so, the dyspeptic writer, the angry, bad-tempered, irritable writer, makes a pronouncement, a statement, so extreme that it sounds like a plea for attention. Ebullient, cheerful and full of energy. Exuberant, joyful. And in Elon Musk, it's ebullient boss. Why is he an ebullient boss? He's buoyant, apparently, exuberant, full of energy, and often cheerful. Not 100% sure if that's true, but either way, it says here that Elon Musk is an ebullient boss. I know it sounds similar to the word bully, but ebullient is a positive word meaning cheerful and full of energy. To edify, to instruct or improve someone morally or intellectually, build them up, to educate them, give them erudition, instruction and enlightenment. Maybe it gives you good character, it's edifying. If something is awful and tawdry and brings you down, lowers you, it's unedifying. So to edify is to lift you up, instruct you and enlighten you, morally or intellectually. Shows that revolve around women are so few and far between. The ones that exist are expected not only to entertain us, but to represent and edify us too. Teach us, enlighten us, edify us. Egress, the action of going out or leaving a place, exiting essentially, withdrawing, departing, to exit, to egress. Obviously coming in is ingress, and the opposite they say here is egress. And an obstacle in your path might prevent you from easy egress, easy exit from a seat, for example. Ersatz, of a product used as a substitute, usually an inferior imitation, an artificial substitute that isn't as good. That's something that's ersatz. I believe it's a German word. As any computer scientist will tell you, creating an ersatz version of something in software is inevitably less precise and more costly than simply making use of the thing itself. So copying it and having a cheap imitation, an artificial substitute, an ersatz version, just isn't as good as just buying it properly. Erstwhile, fantastic word, haven't seen it 
in otherless, meaning former, the previous, the past, the one time but not anymore, the old, used to be but isn't anymore, erstwhile. So the stake of the cooperative group, its erstwhile owner, not the owner anymore, it's the former owner, its erstwhile owner, was reduced to 20%. Euphony, the quality of being pleasing to the ear. You may already know the word cacophony, which means being discordant, displeasing to the ear. A euphony is the opposite, pleasing to the ear, melodious, musical. So these choristers, these choir singers, are extolling these lyrics in a Harlem-esque euphony, sounding like something from Harlem, in a euphony. We're praising the melody here. To expiate, to atone for the guilt or sin you have, to make amends, to try and make up for something. To expiate your sins is to try and make up for these transgressions that you've done before. So this sentence is talking about a nation that has been humiliated, and now that it wants to expiate that humiliation, make up for, make amends for that humiliation, that guilt. Extant, still in existence, surviving, still around, remaining and living. And we have the sentence, the earliest extant paintings, the earliest still existing paintings, date to 1825, and show him with vivid eyes and thin lips. So the earliest paintings that still exist, in other words, the earliest extant painting. Earliest one that's still around. Now for a French word, fracas, sometimes pronounced in Britain as fracas, a noisy disturbance or quarrel, a skirmish, a fight, a scuffle, a brawl and a fray, usually maybe with a few punches thrown, a fracas, or pronounced properly, a fracas. There was a diplomatic fracas between Turkey and Germany. A showdown, a brawl, they got into a basic silly fight, basically. A fracar. Or if you want to be British, fracas. Good old fracas. Anyway, next word. A freeze. Not F-R-E-E-Z-E, -E, which is to freeze like a freezer, or be icy temperatures. This is F-R-I-E-Z-E, -E, a freeze. Much more artistic. A broad horizontal band a sculpted or painted decoration, especially on a wall near the ceiling. You know the entrance to certain Greek buildings, if you look up near the top, you see lots of statues in like a row, that's a frieze. If you still can't picture it, just Google the word frieze, F-R-I-E-Z-E, -E, and you'll see lots of examples of beautiful friezes. Great if you're on a foreign holiday and you wanna show off your vocab, talk about the friezes that you can see, especially if you're in Greece or Italy. And the sentence talks about a frieze on the wall of America's Supreme Court that shows some of the great lawgivers of history. And you could also Google what that looks like. So it's almost a term of art and architecture, a frieze. Next word is fusillade. A series of shots fired or missiles thrown all at the same time or in quick succession. A fusillade, a bombardment, a salvo, a volley of shots, a fusillade. Of course, this can be literal, like in a war, in a battle, or metaphorical, maybe a fusillade of insults hurled at the politician, for example. The sentence talks about China's first fusillade in a global currency war, their first rapid round of shots fired. Fusillade. A gaffe, an unintentional act or remark causing embarrassment to its originator, the person who said the remark. A gaffe is usually when a politician says something they were thinking, but they shouldn't say out loud. Synonyms would be a blunder, a mistake, an error, a funny gaffe. Usually there's an element of humour if you call something a gaffe. If a politician says something awful, you don't really call that a gaffe. If they accidentally say, oh, that vote is so annoying, and it's caught on mic, that would be a gaffe. Here we talk about Boris Johnson, and they say he is gaff prone. He's liable to make gaffes often. That suffix hyphen prone means they do that thing a lot. So if you're laughter prone, it means you're likely to laugh a lot. If you're mistake prone, you're likely to make mistakes a lot. 
If you're gaff prone, you're likely to make gaffs, blunders quite a lot. So two words for the price of one there. Next, we have gainsay, to speak against or oppose someone, to be object to, be hostile to, to gainsay what someone said. Basically, say something against someone, to gainsay. She was too young to know better, let alone gainsay her uncle, let alone speak against her uncle. To gainsay, to speak against. Great word here, gerontocracy. Any word that ends with crassy, like democracy or plutocracy, means control or power. And the word at the beginning is who has the power. So democracy is demos, people, power, power by the people. Plutocracy, we're talking about wealth being what's in power. If you're geriatric, you're old and senile, so a gerontocracy is ruled by the old people. So lots of interesting etymological origins there, but either way here we have gerontocracy, a state or society governed by old people. And they're talking about Saudi Arabia here, apparently being a gerontocracy, being ruled by old people. Halcyon, denoting a period of time in the past that was idyllically happy and peaceful. A golden age, a paradise, happy times, the halcyon era. In this sentence, in their halcyon days, the mainstream parties used to share most of the vote between them. So back in the golden era, the golden days, the halcyon days, all the voters used to go to the mainstream parties. Hegemony, leadership or dominance, especially by one group over another, or over all others. A bit like monopoly, but we're talking about states or governments or bigger institutions. Synonyms would be dominance, dominion, leadership, lording over others. Being a hegemon means you have hegemony. And here the sentence is talking about the hegemony of the dollar, the dominance of the dollar over all other currencies. So as you can see, it doesn't just have to be a government or a person, it's anything that might have sole dominance in a particular field or sphere. Hermetic. Insulated or protected from outside influences. Airtight, sealed. In fact, the phrase is often hermetically sealed. And here we talk about there was a hermetic logic, an airtight, watertight logic to them, which made it possible to see how they could beguile and thrill many people. So their logic was hermetic, meaning their logic is airtight, immune to outside influences, sealed off from attack. Heterodox, not conforming with accepted or orthodox standards or beliefs. So dox is like a position or belief, and ortho means right. So those are the right beliefs, the orthodox, the traditional views. If you're hetero, you have different views. So heterodox, you have views that are different to orthodox position, the traditional position. In other words, you are unorthodox, heretical, like a heretic dissenting, not agreeing with the traditional accepted position. Some people have, as this sentence says, heterodox religious views. They are not the standard religious views, and here they're talking about the Baha'i community. Homogenous, very different from heterodox. Homogenous means all of the same kind, all alike, uniform, identical, unvaried, homogenous. And in the economist sentence, they're comparing London to Paris and Berlin and saying that those two latter cities, Paris and Berlin, are quite homogenous in terms of immigrants and ethnicities. More uniform, identical, compared to London here. Iconoclast. Someone who attacks cherished beliefs or institutions. A rebel, a critic, skeptic, dissenter. Someone who breaks the norms. Maybe they have heterodox views as we saw earlier. And in the sentence, they're describing someone who is the left wing's most outspoken, loudly speaking, iconoclast, skeptic, critic, dissenter, rebel. Idol, very much like Halcyon, an extremely happy, peaceful, or picturesque episode or scene. A glimpse of paradise, an idol, 
the ideal time, like a honeymoon period, idyllic would be the adjective. And here they're talking about a disruption to their rural countryside idyll, their slice of paradise in the countryside. Ignoble, not honourable in character or purpose. You can probably guess that because noble means like gentlemanly, full of character, chivalry. So ignoble is the opposite, not honourable, unworthy, dishonourable, base. Moreover, by controlling the body, he controlled the equally unruly mind, keeping it pure from ignoble strife. So he was trying to keep his mind pure from dishonourable tension, strife. Impune, to dispute the truth, validity or honesty, usually, of someone's statement or motives. You're calling it into question. You're challenging it. You're impugning. How dare you impugn my motives, would be something that someone would say. <laughs> the example sentence from The Economist says something similar. Someone was impugning Mr. Abe's motives, and they're saying that was too cynical. They were calling into question the person's intentions and psychology and motivation. So it's a bit more than even disputing whether something is truthful or valid. It's actually saying, I don't even know if that person's honest. You're impugning their motives, impugning that person. Incise, or an incision, to mark or decorate an object with a series of cuts, to engrave, to etch, to carve out. This 12th century incense burner is incised, engraved, etched, with calligraphy, beautiful handwriting, that identifies its maker and first owner. To incise something, to make incisions on something. Incubus, fantastic word, very fancy. A serious cause of distress or anxiety. A monkey on your back, your incubus. The Japanese people freed of the incubus of a war industry, something that caused them great distress, a burden, an onerous source of anxiety, their incubus. Now, the sound of a bell, especially when it's rung solemnly for the death or a funeral, a toll, the death knell, for example, of an industry, a chime, a grave solemn bell, a knell. The change in policy is a blow to the prison industry, but it hardly, it doesn't sound a death knell, the death bell, like at a funeral for its business model. As in, there isn't a death knell, so the industry, the business model can keep going. Lacrimose, fantastic word. Anything that induces tears, causes tears, makes you sad and weepy, tearful. This morning, the world is not talking about a dubious doubtful song by the host, a lachrymose tearful speech, or even an appalling outfit. A lachrymose speech is one that's going to cause you to cry, or maybe the person delivering it cried. Lacuna, an unfilled space or interval, a gap, lovely word, an elegant way of saying a slight interval, a slight gap, a slight space. And the sentence talks about an insane lacuna in the justice system. It's a gap there, maybe a loophole, a lacuna. To lambast someone, to criticise them harshly. To castigate, chastise, condemn. All of these words have very interesting etymologies that you can check out. They are all subtly different, but that gives you a flavour of what the word means. To lambast someone is to castigate them, to tell them off in a long tirade. The president was lambasted for his otherworldly complacency. He was arrogant, a bit too confident. He was complacent and he was attacked for it harshly. He was lambasted. Larceny. Theft of personal property. Stealing, robbing someone's personal property. We saw earlier in the list that arson means setting fire to things. Well, here is another example of a crime you can commit. <laughs> Larceny. Stealing someone's personal property an act of larceny. Libertine, someone who takes liberties, someone who rejects the opinions usually in matters of ethics or religion, someone who wants their own pleasure, 
They want their own liberties, usually sexual. They think on their own, pursue pleasure. They are a hedonist. They are profligate. They follow their own ethical rules. There are aunts for every worldview. And they contrast here two extreme worldviews. The Puritans, who believe in complete moral purity, to the libertine type of view. Someone who doesn't believe in accepted authorities like religion, does their own thing in the pursuit of pleasure. Lugubrious, looking sad, dismal. Anything that's mournful, gloomy, sad, glum is lugubrious. A long way of saying that. And they talk about the lugubrious lyrics of a particular song. They make you a bit sad and down. Maelstrom, fantastic word. A situation of confused movement or violent turmoil, turbulence, tumult. I think this word might be Swedish or Norse, I'm not sure, but maelstrom, it's lovely to say. Like a hurricane's hit the situation, it's a maelstrom. A confused tangle of sudden events. A maelstrom of resignations hit the company, for example. Or in this sentence, the execution of its leaders triggered a maelstrom of events. A sudden, confused, violent set of events in short succession. A magnate, a wealthy and influential businessman or businesswoman. A tycoon, a mogul, an industrialist. Someone who's rich, often in industries like a steel magnate or a copper magnate, oil magnate or a media magnate. Usually a billionaire these days. And here, as I said, they're describing someone called Andrew Carnegie, who was a famous steel magnate. One of the richest men in history, I think. Interestingly, this next word they've slightly misspelled in the top here, but they've spelled it correctly down here. It's a malapropism, which they have spelt with a prism at the end here, but it's actually malapropism. It's using a word in a very silly, mistaken way accidentally. It's a bit like a gaffe with a politician. If you misspeak on a particular word and it has a hilarious effect, that's a malapropism. Imagine like I said, it's a malapropism, right? <laughs> and I make a mistake like that. You would laugh and you go like he's mistakenly used the word in a funny way because he said piss. And that's a malapropism. <laughs> I didn't say pissum. But anyway, I didn't commit a malapropism. That would be a misuse, a solecism, a blunder. And here they describe a list of supposed apparent malapropisms. Not with an R notice. Mal, remember, is bad, and so it's a bad use of words. Misanthropy. Also misanthropic. Disliking humankind. Miss, bad, like mistake. Anthro is like anthropology humans. So not liking or disliking humankind. Misanthropy. Hatred of mankind, cynicism. You shouldn't confuse, the sentence says, individualism, believing in the individual, for misanthropy hating other people. It's not the same thing. If you are a misanthrope, you don't like other people. Monolithic, large, powerful, and indivisible, uniform, one big block. Lith is stone and mono is one. So if you're one big boulder, one big block, that is monolithic. You are inflexible, indivisible, rigid, unbending. And here they talk about the decline of monolithic class groups. It used to be each class was completely separate. You had the upper class separate completely from the working class and all the working class people were the same. They were monolithic. But now there's more social mobility. Not everyone's the same. It's less monolithic. Munificent. Larger or more generous than is usual or necessary. Generous, essentially. Lavish, bountiful giving out here equally munificent prizes. Generous, lavish, more so even than usual, munificent. Myopic, nearsighted, short-sighted, small-minded, insular. Not seeing the bigger picture would be myopic. An example here of myopia is judging politicians' economic management on the basis only of the very recent past, like judging how a president is doing based on one year of the economy. That would be myopic. You're only looking at the small picture, 
you've got to look at the bigger picture. The nadir, the lowest point in something. The opposite being the zenith, the highest point. The nadir is the all-time low, the lowest point in the fortunes of someone, point zero. So the nadir of the economy was at the end of 2009, and they're talking about the financial crash. And the lovely word next is neophyte, a person who is new to a subject, skill, or belief. A beginner, a learner, a novice. Neo meaning new. And here they talk about jazz neophytes, people who are new to jazz, the musical genre. Noisome, having an extremely offensive smell, rancid, disagreeable, unpleasant, putrid, irritating your nose. And here they talk about this substance called skunk, and it's a noisome substance. It really smells horrible. Nostrum, a pet scheme or favourite remedy, usually used by politicians for some sort of social or political reform. That's their nostrum, their prescription for everything, their answer to everything, their cure-all. And it was a nostrum for Republicans that polls are biased. That's just a belief they have, their answer to every question. Oh, the polls are biased. That's their nostrum, something they lean on to answer all the questions. And now a clue to stop, to cover up, to close up, to obscure something, like the clouds obscuring or occluding the sun. To block, to shut in, to cover. Mars will be occluded by the sun for two weeks, apparently, at some point, or was in 2013. Papian, a song of praise or triumph. If you're giving someone a huge amount of praise to a ridiculous degree, you could say that's a paean of praise. You're almost worshipping them in a godlike way. Here they're talking about a song where it's a paean to social democracy. A song just oozing with praise for that thing. A paean of praise. A paean to something. Panoply. A complete or impressive collection of things. An array. A collection. A panoply of restrictions, this says, results in greater disenfranchisement taking away the vote from someone. So it's a set, not just one restriction or two, it's a panoply of restrictions, a huge array of restrictions that is taking away the right to vote. It's disenfranchising people, apparently, in North Carolina. Pastiche, an artistic work consisting of a medley of pieces, a blend, a mixture of pieces taken from different sources. That you would describe as a pastiche. But in politics, you might have a pastiche of policies, just drawn from the left, the right, the centre, up, down, everywhere, drawn from a mixture of sources. And sentence here is using the word in a traditional way, talking about an artistic pastiche, where maybe there'll be a bit of clay next to a bit of oil painting, next to some metal work, all joined together. That's a mixture of different styles. It's a pastiche. Paucity. The presence of something only in small or insufficient quantities or amounts. We don't have enough. It's scarcity, there is paucity. Sparseness, a dearth of that thing. Here we talk about the paucity of businesses. A lack of businesses is not due to a shortage of opportunities to make money. So why is there a paucity of business? A scarcity, just not many businesses. Paucity. Pellucid, lucid and clear in style or meaning, easily understood, comprehensible, you can understand it, it's pellucid. Lucid, of course, meaning clear. And here we're describing pellucid, clear, charismatic, charming, winning, truth-telling. Telling the truth in a very clear, easily understood, pellucid way. Phalanx, a body of troops or police officers standing or moving in close formation. Thick file or flanking of usually police or army, a phalanx, bodyguards maybe. Maybe these celebrities or whoever it was were protected by a phalanx of armed guards surrounding them in close formation. Phalanx. Philistine, someone who is hostile or indifferent to culture and the arts. This is an ancient slur going back hundreds and or thousands of years, describing a group of people. But either way, if you're describing them as a Philistine, 
We're saying they are a bore, anti-intellectual, an oath. They're not cultural. They don't believe in or understand the higher arts. And we have a company here with artistic projects and anyone who grumbles about them is made to seem like a Philistine. They're described as anti-intellectual if they don't like this company and its artistic projects. But I can assure you that none of you listening or watching this are Philistines because you clearly care about culture and self-improvement. Peak, a feeling of irritation or resentment resulting from a slight. A peak of displeasure, annoyance, displeasure, indignation. The Russians have responded with predictable peak. Annoyance, frustration, indignation. Someone's insulted or slighted you, and that causes this feeling of irritation, peak. Polemic, a strong verbal or written attack on someone or something, usually in a slightly political sense. A diatribe invective. And this person wrote a very heavy, strong polemic against Coca-Cola and Pepsi. Not just a criticism, a long, detailed argument against that thing. Pressy, a summary or abstract of a text or speech. A synopsis, a summation. I could say the pressy for this video is, it's the Economist GRE word list. Just a short synopsis description, a pressy. This person's book is a pressy of 50 years into 77 chapters. This massive topic, 50 years of art or whatever, boiled down into a very tiny pressy. Well, not that tiny, 77 chapters, but much shorter. It's a summary. Prosaic is the opposite of poetic. So something that's prosaic is commonplace, unromantic, ordinary, everyday. And the sentence talks about the risks that travellers face are often prosaic. Fairly standard, everyday not as crazy as special as getting blown up in a war zone, a bit more standard risks. The opposite of something romantic and poetic is prosaic. Puerile, childish, silly, trivial, immature, babyish, infantile. Meanwhile, out of puerile spite, babyish spite, Mr. Trump launched an assault on his party leadership. Anything that's immature, very silly, is puerile. A pundit, an expert in a particular subject or field who is frequently called on to give opinions. On the TV you see lots of political pundits or soccer pundits, football pundits. It's an advisor or authority, more it's someone who goes on TV to give their opinion on lots of matters. There's lots of pundits around, no shortage of pundits in the world. We can all be a pundit at times. The prevailing view, the dominant view among pundits, TV commentators, is that Russia is indeed back in Asia. Obviously you can be a radio pundit or an internet pundit. Most commonly you're talking about the TV ones though. Querulous, complaining in a sulky, petulant, whining manner. You're being touchy, testy, pettish, querulous. Their querulous, hostile or annoyed faces recur in her work from the late 1950s. Talking about artwork, where we have querulous faces Faces that look sulky, petulant, whining. Quiescence, a state or period of inactivity or dormancy. Inertia, latency, it could happen in the future, but at the moment it's quiescent, displaying quiescence. And the question they're asking is what to make of the relative quiescence, quietness, inactivity of America's poor. Why aren't they protesting more? They're inactive, but maybe in the future they won't be. Quixotic, exceedingly idealistic, unrealistic or impractical, based on the book Don Quixote, which I've read most of. Unrealistic, impractical, romantic was the main character. So it's just named after him. Anything that's quixotic probably won't happen, but it's very romantic and idealistic. Here there are quixotic visionaries, romantic idealists, driving the digital revolution forward. He was probably a raconteur as well, someone who enjoyed telling stories in a skillful and amusing way. A spinner of yarns, a storyteller, a raconteur. You can always trust a raconteur to entertain a group of people at a pub maybe or a bar. 
the latest continental raconteur, so someone from continental Europe, eager to spin Ireland's tale, to tell Ireland's story in a fun, skillful, amusing, entertaining way. Redress, great word. Remedy or compensation for a wrong or grievance. Reparation, restitution, recompense, to redress a wrong. There must be redress by an independent tribunal for those who have been mistreated. Reparations, restitutions, making right a wrong. Repast, lovely word, a meal, a feast, banquet. You're describing a lovely meal, usually in lovely, relaxing circumstances. An enjoyable repast. A noonday repast, something happening around noon in this sentence. Usually a lunch, maybe dinner. A scrumptious, very tasty, delicious repast. Ribald, referring to sexual matters in an amusingly rude or irreverent way. Not treating it out of respect, it's not reverent, it's irreverent. Treating it without respect. Bawdy, risque, indecent. Maybe making a sexual pun or sexual innuendo, that's being ribald. So a ribald reply would be one where you're saying something slightly joking and sexual in your reply. Rococo, architectural style characterized by an elaborately ornamental style of decoration. More so based on decor, so I think that it wouldn't be as common in the GRE to see this word, but you're describing elaborate, beautiful, ornamented wall carvings and decorations. Moving on swiftly, we have sanguine. I also used to forget the meaning of this word, but I think I know it now. Optimistic or positive, especially in an apparently bad or difficult situation. Buoyant, hopeful. Hopeful in difficult circumstances. That person is sanguine. Some people fear a future of mass unemployment. Others are sanguine or optimistic that people will have time to adapt. Sanguine. Scintilla. A tiny trace or spark of that quality or feeling. Just one smidgen, one iota, one particle. A scintilla. She didn't express a scintilla of regret. One tiny bit of regret. <laughs> I just made that the example, but so did the economist here. After a scintilla of regret over lost youth, to turn 50 should be to enter the prime of life. You should only have a tiny little amount of regret, a scintilla of regret. Wonderful word. Semantic, relating to meaning in language or logic. What is the meaning of that thing? Can you tell me the semantics behind it? What it means? Semantic parsing, or trying to tell the difference, ensued over whether the modifier meaningful is significantly different from significant. <laughs> Are those two words different? Let me ask you. Meaningful and significant. Some people think they're the same. And this debate is called semantic parsing because they're trying to tell the difference, they're trying to pass the semantics, the meaning of the word. That's what semantics is, the meaning when we're talking about language or logic. Difficult word there. Well, this is the hardest list. Sobriquet, a person's nickname, their appellation, their moniker, best way to say it is their nickname, their sobriquet. This debate earned him the sobriquet champion of patents. That was his nickname, the champion of patents, his soporific. Soporific. I hope this video is not soporific. Tending to induce drowsiness or sleep. Something that's like a sedative, sleep inducing. In the soporific heat, the heat that's going to cause you to go to sleep. Supine. Failing to act as a result of moral weakness or indolence. Being spineless and weak. A moral coward is to be supine. A bit harsh, maybe. The hitherto supine investors. Hitherto means up to this point. So up to this point, these investors had been supine, spineless, lacking courage, cowards, weak, supine. Due to weakness, or it could be laziness, but more often weakness. Fantastic word. Synoptic. Taking or involving a comprehensive view. A succinct, concise, compressed view of something. A bit like the word we saw earlier, a pressy. This is an adjective though. 
Synoptic means seeing everything, kind of taking the whole into account. They had a synoptic vision, a vision of the whole, comprehensive, like the word synopsis, a summary of a book. Toady, to act in an obsequious sucking up way, to be servile, to grovel, to be a toady. <laughs> Great word. Britain's Conservative government is accused of sacrificing the steel industry to toady up to China, to suck up to China, to grovel towards China, to be a toady or to toady up to someone. You can imagine toads probably don't like that analogy, but either way, that's the word, toady. Truculent, easy or quick to argue or fight. Aggressive, belligerent, pugilistic, defiant. And they're talking about the Republican Party's truculent right-wingers, their aggressive right-wing element. Turgid, tediously pompous or bombastic, overblown, inflated, grandiose. I hope my descriptions of these words aren't turgid. I hope they're not inflated, overly long, overblown, hyperbole. And in the sentence, it's talking about churning out turgid propaganda propaganda that's just over the top. It's inflated, it's turgid. And now we have Tyro. This occurred in another list, which I didn't know at the time, but now I do know because of the other list. A beginner or novice, or as we saw earlier, a neophyte, a newcomer. When he was a young Tyro in Silicon Valley, a newcomer in Silicon Valley, his vision inspired many of his business decisions. Umbridge, to take offence or annoyance. To take umbrage is usually the phrase. To be insulted, offended, affronted. This president takes umbrage at charges that reforms are lagging. He takes offence at it. To upbraid, to find fault with someone, to scold them. Not as harshly as to castigate someone, but just to upbraid them. To rebuke them, to reprimand them. Don't do that again. To upbraid them. In the past, its neighbours isolated and upbraided, told off Austria for its flirtations with nationalistic extremism. Don't do that. To be upbraided. Verdant. Green with grass or other rich vegetation. Leafy, grassy, lush. This bakery was in a verdant corner of the capital. The rest of the capital was chaos, but this corner was leafy, green, verdant. I think in many languages verde means green, doesn't it? I don't know. I'm not a language expert in terms of foreign languages. Not bad at English though. Virulent. Extremely severe or harmful in its effects. A bit like a virus. Notice the similarity in the words. Toxic, deadly, destructive. Virulent. A more likely catastrophe, Mr. Rawls believes, would be a pandemic. Virulent enough, deadly enough, to cause the breakdown of the national sewerage system. Luckily, Corona hasn't done that yet. Vitiate, to destroy or impair the legal validity of. To put an end to, to scrap, to vitiate something. The firm or business admitted that it had vitiated its stated standards. It had done away with them, scrapped them, snuffed them out. It didn't have those standards anymore. Vitriol, fantastic word. Cruel and bitter criticism, venom, nastiness. But to show venom like poison, to really get under people's skin with some vitriol, some cruel criticism. Given the vitriol, the nasty criticism that has followed the film since its inception, since its start, it does well simply not to be a colossal mistake. So the film manages not to be a mistake despite the vitriol, the criticism. Vociferous, vehement, clamorous, using their voice in a loud way to be vociferous. Clamorous, making a big noise, noisy. 10 weeks of ever more vociferous argument, noisy, clamorous, voices raised argument. Welter, a large number of items in no order, a confused mass, a jumble, tangle, a welter of conflicting pressures a tangled up mass of conflicting pressures. Not organized at all makes a large group of something a welter of that thing, a confused jumble. 
This list, I hope, is not a welter of words, not a confused jumble of words. It's in order of difficulty and it's alphabetical. To winnow, to blow a current of air through something in order to remove the chaff. That's the technical definition, but really it means to filter out, to winnow the field, to sift out who's good and who's not good, what's necessary and what's unnecessary. Many lawmakers from both parties join Mr. Obama in wishing to winnow America's overstuffed prisons, as in take out those people who don't need to be there, keep the people who do need to be there, to sort out. It's an ancient farming process of taking the grain and removing the chaff, but now it means metaphorically filtering out what's needed with what's not needed, to winnow something down or to winnow something. Xenophobia. Intense or irrational dislike or fear of people from other countries. Someone who doesn't like foreigners, essentially. The sentence describes rising xenophobia, not liking foreigners, in Europe. A formal way of saying someone who doesn't like foreigners is to say they are xenophobic. And finally, yoke. A wooden cross piece that is fastened over the necks of two animals and attaches them to a plough or a cart. It's also a verb to yoke two things together, to bond, tie, subject those two things together. You could be yoked in marriage, tied together in marriage. Or you can throw off the yoke of your employment, remove the bond of your employment. So literally, it's what used to tie together farm animals to keep them working, but now metaphorically, it's anything that ties you to something, a bond. Usually bad, but can be good as well. Depends on your perspective. And the sentence is, the existential consequences of throwing off the yoke of religion is debated in many countries. Existential means to do with your very existence and what it means to be alive. And there's a debate about that in terms of what it means to throw off the yoke, the bond, the tie of religion. And that's a very deep way of ending a very long and detailed list. Now, if you have made it this far, first of all, thank you and well done, because I really hope you've learned quite a few words. And second of all, I'd really appreciate feedback in terms of, do you like one massive big vocab video or are smaller chunks more helpful? Do you like it when there are sentences on screen? Is it helpful when I talk about etymology or would you prefer more sentence examples? Is it helpful with the synonyms and antonyms? Please do let me know. But above all, thank you for joining me on this journey of English language discovery.